we can get so you go straight to Avery Jensen at the Caldwell Cattlemen's Association, right? Right, right. Yeah, I packed you some grub. Looks like you could at least let him stay for supper. Oh, my God. Look, Wish, I want him there and back as fast as I can. Oh, well, Wish, this will do just fine. Thanks very much. Ah, adios, gentlemen. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Roddy. going somewhere? Yeah, you're going to Caldwell. See if we have to cut west to Dodge or not. Dodge? Why? Yeah, uh, just in case what I heard back at the crossing is true. Bottom's supposed to be dropping out of prices. Too many herds going into Ellsworth. Be worth our while to cut further west where there ain't no glut. That'd take an extra week or so. It'd be worth it if and we can get the extra price. Yeah, if. Yeah, well, that's what I sent Roddy to find out. I kind of hate to see him go off right now. Hmm? Why? Well, we may just have us some trouble up ahead here. Uh, well, that's all we need is a little more trouble. What is it now? There's no water for tonight. But you said there was bound to be water at this place. There always has been. This creek fed by a spring from the pass. Had plenty of water in it a few days ago, and now it's completely dry. Isn't that fine? Well, where's the next water? The other side of them hills. I still say there's got to be water at that spring in the past. Could be that the spring dried up, you know. Not that fast for no reason. I think somebody's dammed it up and cut it off. Well, I guess it'll be worth a look-see. Quince, you see that they get to bed ground. We'll meet you there. Let's go. <laughs> still wet. The water was coming down here not long ago. Let's have a look, see. Are they shooting at us? Seems more like maybe signaling. I guess your hunch was right. Off this pass. I tell you, senor, go back. Or I will shoot. I tell you, we're coming through. We got guns too. You just force us to shoot back, fella. Stop right there. There's more than one gun here. coming through now. This is open range, established trail, and the only pass through these hills. I just, what do you expect us to do? Go around. That's two days out of our way. But you ain't coming through here. You in charge here? I'm in charge. Who are you? That doesn't matter. This pass is closed, and we've got the guns to keep it closed. I don't know about that. We've got a herd in back of us, with a full crew. And they're just itching to give you a fight. You plan to bring cattle through here? That's right. First off, they gotta have water, though. Well, that's your problem. Now, look, those cattle gotta have water. And they're gonna get it one way or another. 
You ever tried to stop a thirsty herd, mister? We'll stop them. And your drovers, too, if we have to. Now turn around and go back. What you doing up there anyways? What we're doing up here is none of your business. Now I'll give you 10 seconds to turn around and go back. One, two. What you doing is against the law. Three, four, five. You got no right at all. Six. Lousy ain't fooling. Seven, eight, nine. What do you suppose they're up to? I don't know, but I think we'd better find out. I don't like this, Mr. Mayor. Could be real trouble. Don't worry, Finn. Just get everybody back to work. could be mining. We dammed up the spring, all right, but, but they ain't set up for sluicing. They're not letting any water down there, but they're gonna have to when that pond fills up. And we can't wait that long, though. Let's scoot down a little closer. And they ain't looking this way. Come on. Careful now. Stand back. We don't want to cave in. This could be it, Mr. Mayor. It's the helmet, all right. Shall I dig? Yes, but carefully. Very carefully. This is it. This is the one. I knew it. I knew it. All right. Hold it. Right there. All of you. And now maybe you'll tell me what you're all doing here. See for yourself. It looks like you might be mining, but for what? Dead men. What this is? Looks like some kind of funny old metal. Green with 200 years of grave mold. It was a badge of authority, a symbol of rank. It marks those bones as the remains of Captain Antonio Cabral, emissary of the Viceroy of New Spain. I don't suppose that means anything to you. Oh, no, uh, oh, no, not, not too much. 
Well, I'll explain it to you. If, if you'll point that gun in another direction so we can sit down and talk like gentlemen. Yeah. Oh, boy. We talked pretty good when you had guns pointing down our throats. Now you go ahead and try hard. Well, at least let my men get back to work. Oh, everybody stays inside. First off, who are you? My name is Joseph Merritt. This is my assistant, my right arm, my friend, Finn Harper. The others are workmen I brought with me from New Mexico territory. New Mexico, it's a long ways off. You don't look like you're from New Mexico. I'm not, but I lived there for a few years. And you come all this way to uh, dig up dead men? Not exactly. I'm interested in history. I read some old accounts of a Spanish expedition that set out from Santa Fe about 200 years ago you know, to look over the plains. On their way back, they camped here. They were massacred by Indians, every man of them. Ah, uh -huh. every one of them? If that's so, then uh, how come you knew where to look? Years later, an Indian gave the Padres a description of the place. I found that description and decided I'd try and find the exact spot. And as you can see for yourself, well, after two months, we finally succeeded. So you're trying to tell me that you come all this way and spend all this money that it must have cost you just to satisfy curiosity? Not just curiosity. The truth about what happened at that party is important to history. We're about to find out that truth, unless you spoil everything by destroying all this. Me destroy? By me, I'm just looking for water for my cattle. But you can see for yourself, the excavations are right on the bank of that stream. If we let the water down now, they'll be washed away forever. Surely even you can see how important this is. I see, all right. Except I just don't believe you, man. Look, if you was uh, just all for history, how come you got all those guns along? You don't need to fight people off to keep them away from history. What do you mean? Well, I mean those, um, those Spanish fellas. Now, what were they looking for? Oh, I'm not that dumb. I know enough about history they was looking for gold. Oh, yes, there was a fantastic myth about the seven cities of Cibola. Yeah, and a fantastic treasure, but they never found it because it didn't exist. Yeah, but uh, just supposing uh, they come across it and they was taking it with them back to Santa Fe. Now, couldn't that be what you're doing here is uh, just a different kind of uh, mining for gold? Yes, and we'll fight before we give up any part of it, Mr. Favor. Look, we're not going to take any of the gold away from you. That is, if there is any. We're after something more important than gold to us, we need water for our cattle. And we're going to get it. Look, I don't want to be unreasonable. How long would all this foolishness take? Well, now that we found this, we might be able to work faster. A day or two, maybe a week. A week? Well, I can't be held up for that long. Look, don't you realize what you're forcing me into is, is bringing my whole herd up here, and if they came up, they'd stomp your diggings to a fairly well, and you'd never have nothing left. Now, if we could just split the difference a little bit. Maybe let a little bit of that water trickle on down through? I can't take the chance. I won't allow it. You won't allow? I'm doing the allowing. I got the gun. Now, are you going to order your men to break that water loose? No. Well, then, you force me into it. Um... Harper. Finn Harper. Finn? Not much else we can do, Mr. Merritt. Finn, don't do it. Uh, continue, Mr. Harper. I'll get my tools. I guess I'll need me a pick. Ain't one here. Pedro, you bring me a pick. All right, Mr. Favor. You throw up your gun or your man here is going to have his guts splattered all over the place right now. I apologize for underestimating you, Mr. Harper. Most folks do, Mr. Favor. Good work, Finn. You two better get back to your herd. Turn them and head them in another direction. Look, don't you realize I got to come this way? And when I come back, I'm going to be coming back with all my men, the whole herd, and... Well, we'll try to stop you. I don't think you've got enough men to do it. Well, we're going to try. Now, you better get going. <laughs> men back. 
back to work fast, Doc. We can concentrate on that one ditch now. Boss. I let that Harper fool me. I'm sorry. Uh, fool me, too. Well, looks like we got a fight on our hands. Hey, what worries me? The crew can move and take care of that bunch. It's the cattle. Either way, I'm afraid the herd is going to get the worst of it. underneath him. Yes. You worried, Doctor? He's right, you know. Our men aren't soldiers. They can't stop any large bunch of drovers, much less a herd of thirsty cattle. I might just have some ideas about that. What kind of ideas? I'll tell you when the time comes. I haven't worked them all out yet. You know, what bothers me is not just can we stop them, but should we? Have we the right to? That's for you to decide, Doctor. Whatever you say, we'll do. Anyway, it might not come to that. We'll hurry these hombres along, work all night. We might just come on that chest any time now, now that we've found the captain. Yes. It's got to be close now. And it has to contain valuables. You read the accounts yourself. Sure, Doctor. And we'll get it, too. Don't you worry. If only we had another day or two. Well, now, I just might know a way we can have that day or two without no fighting, either. Won't hurt nobody. How? Stampede their cattle. Tonight, after dark. It'll take them at least a day to round them all up. Treasure hunting, huh? Well, now, maybe we just ought to get in on that. Yeah, I could stand some of that Spanish gold myself. Who couldn't? But the dig it up from the dead. It ain't gonna matter much to them now, Jesus. Yeah. And if it's right there for the digging, we got just as much right to it as them Jaspers had. You think that could be true, Mr. Favor? I think that you can just rest your mind, Mushy, and not think about it at all. We ain't on no treasure hunt. Well, now, if we gotta fight him, we're entitled to some of that booty. That's no more than fair. Well, not Jimbo, the way I see it. Which is the way it counts. I don't think there's like to be any booty. And if on some wild chance there is any booty, it is like to be a couple of rusty old swords, an old helmet or two, a pile of moldy old bones. Now, if you want to tote that to the railhead, you are welcome. But you do it on your own without pay, because anybody what works for this outfit has got to stick to business and do the job, which at the moment is getting those cattle to water and then moving them on. Whatever it takes. It's gonna take a fight, that's what it's gonna take. No, I'm not so sure about that neither, Pete. Yeah, I don't know what that fool is up to, but he ain't no natural fighting man, I do know that. You think he's bluffing? Oh, he's trying real hard. Yeah, we got nothing to worry about. No, no, I didn't say that exactly, Wish. There is his good right arm to worry about. Oh, you mean Harper? Yes, Mr. Harper. He's another matter entire. He's got guts and intelligence, and he will try something. Yeah, but what? Now, what would you do in his place to hit us the hardest, slow us up the most? Well, I don't know. The herd, I guess. Uh, maybe stampede it. Right. That's why we're going to have half the crew on guard tonight and change every two hours. Now, I want everybody out there. Wishbone, that means you and Mushy, too, everybody. I want you to be ready to greet Mr. Harper when he comes. If he comes. Oh, you come all right, all right. So let's go. You want me to go first, Mr. Wishbone? Don't matter who goes first. Gonna be an all-night job anyway. Tell you what, you stay here and clean up this mess, and I'll go first. scaring up the herd, so no shooting, unless you absolutely got to. Let's ride.
I just heard something over there. Let's go. Wait. I, I didn't want nobody hurt. Well, he's hurt. He's hurt bad. Wishbone's gonna die? Well, he ain't dead yet. His head on a rock, though. His skull's cracked. I don't know. Mr. Wishbone's always the one that's taking care of us. This leg looks mighty bad. Shouldn't we pull it out straight? No. Don't touch it. What do you got to say about it? Please, don't touch that leg. It's very bad. He could lose it. Lose what? Wish. Did he say I was gonna lose my leg? Wish. Mr. Wishbone, I don't want to lose my leg. Easy. I don't want to lose Wish, my... Wish, now take it easy. Stop worrying about it. We'll take care of you. Machine, freshen up that rifle. Uh, it could even be worse if this bleeding ain't stopped quick. Yeah. All right, here, go ahead. feel anything, but my head's spinning. I know, just lie back and rest. We'll get you all fixed up. You ought to have a blanket over him so as he don't catch a chill. Now, how come you know so much about this? What does that matter now? Well, since you do, you said something about us losing his leg. What about it? If it ain't fixed right. Well, can you fix it right? No, I ain't that good. It's got to be a real doctor, a good doctor. A real doctor? You know how far off that is. Ain't one within a uh, hundred miles of here. No, 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 just about two. Huh? My boss, Dr. Merritt. He's a real good one. You mean that fellow up there, he's a medical doctor? Yes, a degree from college and all. Up till two months ago, he was practicing out in Socorro. Well, I'd better get him. I don't know if he'll come. When he left New Mexico, he said he'd never practice medicine again. Why? I don't know. Well, he's going to practice medicine again this once, anyways, if I got to hold a gun to his head. Take me with you. Maybe I can talk him into it. Well, I think we'd better leave you here. 
All right. Then just tell him Finn asks, please come. Think that'll be enough to bring him? Yes, I think so. as fast as we can. We've been working since dawn. You want your share, don't you? If we don't find this soon, there won't be a share for any of us. Listen. All right, get those guns ready. Merritt! Yo, Merritt! It's the herd boss. What do you want? I want to talk. We're coming in. That's far enough. All right, talk. One of my men's hurt bad. Maybe dying. Need you to come down and help him. Where's Finn? He's safe in our camp, and that's where he stays until you come down and help. I'm... I'm not a doctor anymore. Oh, yeah, you're a big treasure hunter now. Well, for a while, you're gonna be a doctor again. If I come, will you turn your herd around and go the other way? What kind of doctor are you, bargain over a man's life? How do I know you're telling the truth? How would I know you was a doctor unless Harper told me? Oh, yeah, by the way, he says to tell you, Finn asks, please come. Give me your word that you'll release us both afterwards. All right, all right, you got it. Now, you're wasting time. Leave two of your men here. Him and another one. All right, Pete, Scarlett. Pedro, keep him under guard every minute. If we don't come back, you know what to do. Don't worry about him. He'll be coming back. So get your gear and come on while there's still time. head and the leg. Take a look at this first. He says I might lose my leg. Nothing wrong here. Clean it, bandage it. Rest will finish the cure. Well, that's something anyways. But this is another matter. That's why I told him, Doc. You were right, Finn. I don't want to lose my leg. I'd rather die first. Would you? I doubt it. You might anyway. Is, is there any chance of saving it? A chance. If the bone ends aren't splintered too much, if I can reset it and patch up the damage around it, and if infection doesn't set in, do everything you can. Any hot water? Just some coffee. Boiling? Put these in it. Any whiskey? Quince. It's gonna hurt pretty bad. Not near as much as losing a leg. Is this all you got? Afraid it's every drop. Hey, give me a slug of that. I'm sorry. But there's just enough for this. You're gonna have to grit your teeth and hang on. All right, everybody, just move back. Finn, get everything else I need ready. Everything's ready, Doc. Bandages? Ready, too. Splints? 
Made him while I was waiting for you to come. <coughs> Anything wrong, Doc? Oh. No. All right, let's get started. Is there anything I can do? Yes. Hold him down by the shoulders, real steady. You too. Will I be able to walk again, Doc? If I can fix it and there's no infection, it'll be as good as new. Thanks. I said if. I can't promise anything. All right, now. Hang on. two worked together some before. Finn could have done this himself. Well, that ain't true. Not yet. I'm only learning. From him? Well, there ain't no medical schools for me, but one day I'll know how to help people. People need doctors. He's better right now than most. Few who call themselves doctors ever saw the inside of a medical school. They learned everything they know from the farmer's almanac. There. Now, if infection doesn't set in, all we can do about that is pray. But I won't lose my leg. I will walk again. It'll mend. Thanks, Doc. Don't thank me. Thank Finn. He saved your life by stopping the bleeding. Thank you, son. Uh, I was the cause of it. Guess we was both just doing the job. Anyway, you made up for it. No hard feelings. I'll split it up, Doc. All right. <coughs> I guess you could use your shot of whiskey yourself. Is there anything wrong? No. No need to concern yourself. Just want to let you know how grateful I was for what you did for Wish. Grateful enough to turn your herd around and keep away from my diggings? Yeah, I'd do that. If there was any other way. But there ain't. There ain't no waters anywhere else, neither. Look, tell you what, why don't we hit a compromise? I'll send up half my crew to help you with your digging and speed things along, and they could throw up some dikes, let a little water down without harming anything. No, there'll be no compromise. Do you think I came down here because I'm giving in to you? Well, I didn't. I came down here because I'm a doctor. This is a, a temporary truce. But don't you realize what might have happened if Harper had succeeded in stampeding those cattle? With the smell of water, they could have just as easily gone up the hill. And sooner or later, they will. Now, I'll try to keep them away from your diggings. But I am going to have to bring them up. They have got to have water. I got no choice. And I have no choice. I'll have to stop you. Look, boss, maybe, maybe if we held these two men. Mr. Favor, you gave me your word. And I'll keep it. You'll go back, both of you. And I think a couple of us will go along with you just to see you keep your end of the bargain. <laughs> Just stand there, get back to work. Doc, the dog's tired. They gotta have some rest. Can't they sleep a few hours? You heard what he said. They'll be back in the morning. There's no time for sleep. And maybe he's right. Maybe if we help him water his cows, bring a few of them in at a time. What are you talking about? Whose side are you on? 
Well, you know you don't have to ask that. Doc, I don't like to argue with you, but somehow, right now, you ain't acting yourself. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I, I don't know exactly why you came out here in the first place, but I got a feeling there's something wrong. There's nothing wrong. Why do you say that? Because all of this, it, it don't make much sense to me. You're a doctor. I told you I'm through with all that. But why? For this? Who are you to ask me why? What difference does it make why? Who do you think you are? I thought I was your friend. All right, you men, go get some sleep, all of you. you're doing. Don't worry, I can do more than all of them put together, the condition they're in. <laughs> Any objections? You better get yourself some sleep. You look like you need it. Don't worry, I'll work all night. You don't have to stand over me like no overseer. Jimbo, you got your men picked out to help you? They're all picked, boss. Good. Keep the herd well bunched and under control. They're sure to try and stampede him. Oh, hey, Sus. Keep the remuda well to the rear. I don't want those hammerheads spooking the cattle. Unless you hear shooting, then you come running, here. Yeah? Yeah. I see you'll stay here and take care of Wish. What? Don't you worry about me. You just prop me up on that seat and give me a gun, I'll take care of myself. You are staying here and behaving yourself, Mushy. Mr. Favor. For all the good he'll do, you go ahead and take him. Masha, you are in charge of Mr. Wishbone, and because sometimes he can be just as foolish as you are, we are not going to let him try and walk on that leg or even try to drive the chuck wagon up to the pass. And we're not going to let him do it, right? Right. The rest of you, come on with beating me. <laughs> Back to work? Senor, we have been talking. We have decided we do not want to die. Well, tell me now, uh, who's gonna die? We do not want to fight. Well, you agreed to whatever was to come, and you agreed to that for a part of this treasure. We do not believe there is any treasure anymore. Anyway, it's not a thing for which to die. Now look, ain't nobody gonna die, and there won't be no fight, neither. I got me a plan. So you hombres just get back to work, get digging here, and leave it all to old Finn. I'm gonna fix it so them cowboys won't show up around here for maybe two or three days. You'll see, just trust Finn. Now, how about it? All right. Good, that's the way, come on. Dig right here, this is where I figure it to be. Mighty close now, too. Uh, might find it any minute. You were right, Finn. This whole idea is crazy. Well, now, Doctor, I was just a little upset last night. Don't pay no heed to that. Anyway, I wasn't kidding just now. I think we're real close to that chest. Maybe only a little while more. Those drovers must be headed up here by now. Well, I posted a sentry down below. We'll hear. What good will that do? I told you I got some ideas. 
What kind of ideas, Finn? I want to know. Well, you remember that explosive we ain't used? Oh, that's, that's too dangerous. Don't worry. Ain't nobody gonna get hurt. I'll just go up there on that hill yonder and wait till the herd shows up down below and then poof. Just a little explosion. Nothing to hurt nobody. Uh, just enough to throw a few rocks up in the air. But the noise it'll make echoing around in this canyon. <laughs> uh, those cows will head for the Rio Grande and no stopping them. Finn, I don't want anyone to get hurt. There won't be. I told you. I don't have the right to ask you or these men to fight to maybe die for me for this. But why are you doing it, Finn? Well, Doc, I figured if it was what you wanted, that was enough for me. I owe you everything. The chance you gave me, the things you taught me. How could I ever have learned it otherwise? It was wrong of me, Finn, but I did have a reason. It wasn't just money. I want you to know that. I know it, Doc. I maybe you guessed your reason, too. Only I didn't want to see it. There is something wrong, ain't there, Doc? I guess you're the only one I can't hide it from, Finn. Doc. Are you gonna die? Tell me, how long? Three, four months, maybe. It's hard to say. I'm leaving my wife and the children nothing. Nothing. I'm trying to be a doctor in a small western town. Barely able to make a living, and then spending what little I had left on this crazy idea. Well, maybe it ain't money they want from me now, Doc, or I need most. Maybe. Good memories, love. Maybe just to have you back there with him now, these last months. Instead of out here. Besides, what about me? You? Well, I got a lot to learn about being a doctor. I ain't learning it out here, digging up dead men. No. Senor! Senor! The herd is coming! Gracias, Pedro. But we're here and we got a job to do. And the sooner it's done, the sooner we can go back there. Sure. You leave it to Finn. You be careful. Don't worry, none. And about last night, I'm sorry. Well, what are friends for us to argue with sometimes? Anyway, I'm... I'm sorry. Pick a couple of others. We'll go around that way. We'll circle around this way. Now look, I don't want to try and take them by surprise, so I don't want to shot fired unless absolutely necessary. Got it? Right. Ready? Right. Come 
Right now, Mr. Favor, we found what we came for. You can drive the cattle through, breach the dam, anything you like. It doesn't matter. Well, then we better take charge of this, huh? No, you cannot. Did he? Boss, we got just as much right to this as they have. No, it's ours. Senor. Give it to them. What? Rather than shed blood over it, give it to them. But, senor. Don't worry, Pedro. You and your men will be paid. And what's come over you, Merritt? Maybe I've learned something, Mr. Favor. Maybe I've learned you don't find your treasures in the ground. Well, if they're gonna give it to us. I told you, we ain't on no treasure hunt. Now, whatever is in there belongs to them. Well, ain't they even gonna look? Nothing but dust. Everything turned to dust. Everything except all books. Let me see. All this for nothing. Nothing at all. No, Pedro. Not nothing. We have found treasure after all. What are you talking about? These old books. Cabral's journals. The records of his expedition. To history more valuable than money. Now we'll know what really happened, everything that happened. Wait till Finn... Finn... He's got to be stopped! Good. He sure yeah. saved my skin. Oh. Doc. Thank God. Here, let me look at that. Now, I know how that fellow Wishbone felt last night. But you're not hurt bad. That's the main thing. You're not hurt bad. Oh, I'm too tough to die, Doc. Oh, I'm too dumb. Look. Still didn't stampede them cows. I guess the beef was that thirsty. They wasn't up to being scared off. And I guess I got a few fair drovers there. And you're not dumb. At least you better not be. You got a lot to learn. And not much time. We're going home, you and I. Just as soon as we can get started.
the flight. Come on up here. have a large hurt, senor. Favor. Your favor. Senor Favor. So many little things can happen to a large hurt, eh? What is your name, senor? What do you want? I am Major Alessio Viegro, on special assignment from Diaz, El Presidente of the Republic of Mexico. My credentials. Authority has been vested in me by Diaz himself for the arrest of a citizen of Mexico who is one of your crew. What citizen's name? Francisco Vallejo. He is the second man on your right. Perez, Castillo, take the prisoner. Oh, you better hold it. I shouldn't have to remind you that this is Texas. Texas, for one reason or another, is a member of the United States. Maybe it would be best if I went with us in your favor. Shut Here up, Frank. Major Viegro, as you can see, we're pushing a hurt. It takes a lot of men. Now, Frank's one of my men. I can't spare him. It's all the same to you. We'll get back to our herd. Stop. He's not all the same to me. You, what is your full name? Francisco Armando Vero y Carenza. You hear him, senor? I heard him give his name, so? He hides from Presidente Diaz, just like his father. What does that mean to you, Frank? Senor Favor, I joined your herd to work, not to bring trouble. Now I think it's best for me to leave. Why? His father fights Diaz, senor. His father is a revolutionary. Let's have him, senor. Let's take him away from you, for his good. And for yours, too. For his good and for mine, he say. The Republic of Mexico stands or falls upon a drover's decision, eh, senor? Quien sabe? Adios, senor. Hey, those cars are dropping from the flank. Let's get out. <laughs> Quiere que traigamos, mi mayor. Hey, hello. Se va con nosotros más tarde. Vámonos. Señor Eva. Oh. Hey. Linus Frank? I would. Señor Favor, I have to tell you some things. Uh, thanks about time. When I signed on with you, I did not give you my right name. A family name, that is. What's the name we get, Dom? I should have. What's your reason? I have never believed in fighting, Senor Favor. When my father went to the hills to raise an army to fight, I could not stay with him. Your father, uh, really, General Valero? See. Si. He's fighting for what makes sense. The word is. Nothing in the world is worth killing other people for a favor. Those fellas today figure they get at your father through you. Maybe it would be best if I just rode out. Aren't you sleepy, Frank? Oh, no, Senor Favor. I am anything but sleepy. I am. You should be, too. You mean you want me to stay, Senor Favor? I'm sleepy, too, Senor. Mayor, he came from inside. Senor Carollo. You are disturbing my sport, Julio. They're visitors, senor. Your mind's wandering. They're outside. You disappoint me, Julio. Even a low bond peon like myself knows that one does not permit visitors to stand about outside one's door. And you are a Hidalgo. Or worse. Shall I let him in? Si, Julio, si. (laughs) 
è Capitan Viegro. Ma io, signor Carroio. I'm a fool. I should have known by this time you would be a Maior. You forgive me, Maior. I have not finished my evening devotions. Your aim is good. My hatred is great. Of clay dolls. Of women. But that's not how you were known in Mexico. That was before my wife betrayed me. You are too high born to ask me with whom, but I will tell you anyway. She betrayed me with death. I am sorry, senor. Who do you kill when your wife dies, Mayor? I doubt, senor, it would seem. <laughs> you do not shed tears for my sorrow, eh? Mayor Viegro, you appear lonely, almost naked. Where's the boy? What do you know of him? You receive your orders. I receive mine too. The president writes a very fine hand. I had much trouble reading it. We found him. We were unable to take him. Why? What is there to taking him dead? He is the son of his father, isn't he? What is there to taking him alive? He is a drover. With a cattle drive, he had many friends. How many men do you have besides those two? Lieutenant Perez. Lieutenant Castillo. I am impressed. Six men outside. Julio! Beans, and cheap wine, and quarters in the stables for the six peones. And afterwards, the same for me. Si, senor. And a bottle of the wine you drink for the mayor and his lieutenants. Si. He has expensive taste, that one. Who is he? Don Julio Ramos, a fine Spanish gentleman, eh? Yeah? The father of my dead wife. You were at the cantina again, Maria. Yes, Grandfather. I was at the cantina again. <laughs> and I danced and I sang. Except I think they like my legs more than my voice. Maria, you're a lady. Ladies have legs, Grandfather. Oh, you must be getting very old, you've forgotten. But they don't display that to pay on a Catina Spanish rock. You forget who your mother was. I remember who my father is. It's Juan Carroyo, retired bandit. Friend drunkard. The sedan trail approaches Spanish Rock. The herd must come close. Now, if you give us some of your men. I have no men. You own every soul in Spanish Rock, not to mention those on the hacienda. They're all women, all of them. They were not old when you led them in battle for President Diaz. Piegro, you are a mayor, but you are also a fool. I led them against fat haciendados. To rob and to plunder. I was not a general. I was not even a mayor. I was a bandido. The Presidente honored you with his friendship. The Presidente honored the votes I bought for him. And then when all was respectable, the Presidente said to me, Juan, it's time for you to go away. You embarrass me. Go to the United States where one bandido more or less won't make no difference. The President was sure you would help. I will not give you any men to attack the herd. Now, Julio will bring you wine soon, very good wine. I'm content here, Viego. I drink. My people make pottery. Spanish rock is peaceful. You are fat and a coward. <laughs> you are right. I am very fat. My daughter Maria, Mayor Viegro, Lieutenant Perez, Lieutenant Castillo, 
They want to fight a war against some cattle. Please. Senor, you are speaking of an official mission of the Army of Mexico. He's very good for fighting cattle. If we were in our country, you would have me whipped. I would have you shot. The man is honest, at least. I'm pretty good looking, too, eh, Maria? Yes. Oh, sit down, Mayor. You will not impress Maria that way. Oh, Willie. They say Mexico City is very beautiful. Not as beautiful as you, senorita. That was necessary to say, but... It is beautiful. You have never been there? No. Sometimes I think I shall live and die here in this place. That is a pity, senorita. But if my mission is successful, it would be a privilege for me to escort you to the city of Mexico. And that was not necessary to say, senorita. Anymore. Your ankle? It's a small hurt. If it were not for you. I'll um, send one of my men back at your horse. I am Maria Carollo. My name's Faber. Senor Faber, will you take me? Noon camp. My cook might be able to accept that ankle for you. Your cook? <laughs> I'm not a chicken, senor. Well, I didn't think so. Here's to be all right. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. gently, <laughs> senor wishful. Sorry, miss. I guess it's a real bad spring. Needs bandages. Mushy, will you get me the... Get the bandages. Trouble picking up the horse? Nah, as gentle as a lamb. Hmm. He uh, said a gopher frightened him. <laughs> Must have been a pretty big gopher. Maria Carollo. Yeah? Oh, uh, my name's Roddy Yates. This is Frank Valero. With great pleasure. Yeah. Arroyo? Roddy, Frank, you better get some grub. Huh? Oh, hmm. yeah. Frank said to get some grub. We'll be grazing the herd here the rest of the day. See, si, senor. Son, las mañanitas que cantaba el rey David y las muchachas bonitas si las cantaba así. Despierta, mi bien despierta, mira que ya amaneció y los pajarillos cantan. La luna ya se metió y el sereno de la esquina me quisiera hacer favor de apagar su linternita mientras que pasa mi amor. Es... 
Wish I knew what to make of her. You may wish you knew whether she had anything to do with the Mexican army. Yeah. Might as well pick up her horse and keep an eye on Frank. Right. Real nice, ma'am. Real nice. Well, we ought to go to bed. Sarita. Yes. I do not believe this matter of a sprained ankle. Oh, it is not sprained. I came here to warn you. Of what? Viegro and his men. They plan to attack your friends. They have help from Spanish rock. We meet inside the camp. It's a rock south of here. It's about half a mile. Ankle any better, Miss Correa? I do not think you like me very much. Does it really matter to you? I don't know. The man I'll never see again. My ankle is much better. Pete? Oh, no, senor. In the darkness, cannot see the gophers. Adios. I think I'll tag along after. I'll let her go, Pete. Waited a long time, Senor Bolero. I had to wait too, till all were asleep. Why, you're a big boy. Senor Fair does not allow droves to leave the camp. You are the daughter of Juan Carroyo. That is what I thought. What is so important about being the daughter of Juan Carroyo? I know you did not come to the camp to help me. And why did you come? Because, Senorita, whatever happens must happen to me alone. Not to my friends. Where are Yegro's men? You have not disappointed me, senorita. Thank you. Not just yet. Say goodbye to your friends, Frank. Let's get out of here. Father, would be proud of him. We will be sure to tell him how bravely his son rode into a trap, tricked by a most beautiful woman. It is not necessary to make speeches. I thought all this would amuse you. So did I. One of the rovers. Bring them both. If you please, son of a great revolutionary general, Is gone. Pete's doing the other Franks. Yeah, add that up to the shooting we heard. I don't like the total. Let's find out what it adds up to.
Blood. Blood? It's all around here. It must have been the Mexican army. Maybe. You're turning Spanish rock. You get on back to the herd. You're not going to take the whole army in by yourself, are you? I'm going after my scout, so. Well, you and me. If I do, I'll send for you. I'll be back by morning. And if you ain't? Well, you give your orders, then. You'll be true boss. My congratulations, Mayor. It was nothing. It was less than nothing. Nine men to take a boy, not to mention Maria Ramosa Carroyo. Take the prisoners into the house. No, Mayor. I have killed men, not slowly, not with the cold blood running through my veins. You are Francisco Valero, eh? It is a name I am proud of. Then why did you leave Mexico? I want no blood on my hands. There is blood on your hands now. Who is the American? A friend. Your friends and your father, they are not lucky in you, Francisco Valero. I need a place to question them. Take them to the pottery shed. There is no one there now. I will ask my daughter Maria to sing to me so the noise of your questions will not be annoying. Entertain them in the pottery shed. I'm going to the cantina. It is late. The men are asleep. I drive myself. Maria, I have done much wrong. I did not think that loving too much could be a disease. But now I begin to feel that my love for your mother has poisoned me. And maybe you too, eh? You have said it was late, my father. It is. Very late. Senor? Two whiskeys. Pero, senor, you are all alone. You mean a big bottle of whiskey. No, two whiskeys. Those whiskeys, por favor. Dos. For my friend, of course. Oh, si, senor. What for your friend? Oh, uh, no sense holding down two tables, right? Really. Oh, I didn't think you noticed me, boss. You didn't come here for did you? Oh, yeah, my horse. Please, he says. Mm. Oh, my friend. Oh, uh, suppose you tell me why you ain't with the herd. Well, uh, y you know, when you're away, I'm the boss, boss, and so I gave myself the order. Countermanding your order. Oh, look, boss, I'm just saving you time. You'd have had to send for me anyway. No, but I can send you back. Just got here. Oh, no, 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 no,
Ankle got better, didn't it? Yeah, fast. You know, somebody ought to congratulate her on a fast recovery. Somebody will. Father is in Durango. He's a small thing to tell us where. Yet not. I don't know. Ignorance is a painful thing, amigo. My father, fight against ignorance. You are proud of your father, eh? I am. Then why are you not at his side? I was a fool to think. That men like you could be beaten you, without bloodshed. You were a fool, and you were still a fool, because you think you will not tell me what I want to know. <sighs> Castillo. Stupid. Have them to his feet. Dear son of a great general. Francisco Leno. In the name of the Republic, I ask you to disclose the hiding place of General Moreno. You are here. I oh. Whispering Flero. Who is Frank Volero? Oh, that Mexican boy at your camp. Oh, I hardly spoke to him. But you did speak to him. See? I don't know where he is, but I know where he wanted to be. Where's that? Out there with me. Oosh. I hate the smell of whiskey. He wanted to make love to me. Find that hard to believe? No. Find it very easy to believe. Now, after you met him. I did not meet him. Why not? I'm not interested in boys. Is he your chaperone? Well, I'm not if you like. I do not have a duena. I think it's unfair. Well, going back to the herd. I am going home. Alone? That is for you to decide, senor. Girl, I used to come here very often to cry. My mother was dead. My father wished I were. You're not a little girl anymore. I do not come here to cry anymore. Put your arms around me. What did that prove? That I am desirable. That no man with his arms around me could think of anything else. In your favor. Bria, where are my men? I don't like to be slow. I don't like to be bribed either. 
Not where I'm a man. Do you think I came up here just to bribe you? Was I wrong? Now you will never know, will you? And I will never come up here again. Come, senor. I will take you to your men. Servants? Of course. You think I look after horses myself? Send your favor. Fine servants, Miss Royal. Very well trained. Mm, very well trained. In the Mexican army. Your guns, please. Maybe they don't understand English. Tell them they'd better give me their guns before I have to shoot. Uh, I think not, senor. It's possible they want you to hand over your gun. You're very good at betrayal. I promised only to take you to your men. I will break even that promise. It is too late. I am too tired. They will take you. Yavancelo al cuarto de alfarería. How you do, Pete? I'm all right. You came to see me this time, senor, eh? I uh, came for my men. A noble mission. For me, I consider uh, nobility a self-indulgence of fools. This one, for instance. He indulges himself so that he may die shortly, unless... Unless what? Unless when consciousness returns, you advise him to talk. He has been most reluctant, senor. Why should I advise him to do that? For the simplest of reasons, senor. Your desire to live. With your permission, Signorita. It was not necessary to ask. Was it ever necessary for anyone to ask, Signorita? It is very late. See, si, it is late. I meant the day, the year. There's no wine in my room. There's no truth or decency either. Juan Carroyo speaks of truth and decency. What do you know about such things? You do not speak to your father that way. I talk any way I like. Not to me! You are my father. Who else has ever struck me? We are no good. Both of us, no good. I know. There was never anyone good except my mother. Your mother. It was the worst of all. If she had not died, when she died, I would have killed her. And all this time, you, my mother was dead. You had me believe that she was saint. You know how I hated the memory of my mother. 
You was dead, but you loved her and had no love for me. So because I thought her good, perfect, almost a saint, I went to the cantina and I danced and sang for them. Do you know why? Because it was the one thing my mother would never do. Now that you've told me, I don't have to be a little girl anymore. Define the memory of a whole person. But there's still something for you to learn, Maria. She was not good. She was not perfect. Not almost a saint, but I loved her anyway. That yeah, should be better. That's fine, thanks. It's just the company here I don't like. The choice was yours, senor. yourself useful, senor. Much pottery in the kiln. The heat must not be allowed to die. Don Julio's devotion to duty was not very convincing. Why didn't you shoot me, too? Why, well, I'm a soldier, senor. I kill enemies only in battle. Traitors of us are another matter. You do not believe me. You are right. I do not kill you because I have another use for you. You haven't said yes to the Aki. Háganse a un lado, puercos. Señorita, lo que pasa aquí es nada de tu concern o de tu amusement. ¿Y qué pasó con mi grandfather? Eso no es mi concern, ni siquiera. Él sogó los guns a los americanos. Él era un traidor. Él era un hombre muy old. Anyone can be a traitor, señorita. Young man, old man, even women. I help you. Which I owe you much. I shall pay you. In blood? People have strange conception about blood. It washes off easily. I did not think that patriotism meant the slaughter of old men and torturing of helpless men. Senorita, I would advise you not to concern yourself with patriotism or with what I do here. There must be some other way to do what you must do without all this. No, Maria. The Major's right. After you've led cattle to slaughtering house, 
You can't complain about how the slaughtering's done. Why did you kill Hulu? Senorita, your place is not here. It is a slaughterhouse. Perez, take the lady out, quickly. Thank you, Perez. Now you, where is your father? I don't know. You know he wants to lie, but it's too early. He wants to offer his life for the safety of his father. But will he offer the eyes of his friend? Perez! Senor Deva was very kind. He helped to build the fire very high under the kiln. Now I want him to look into the kiln at the pottery. Show him. Castillo, tie in your famous hands. What? What are you going to do? I am going to ask in your favor to look into the kiln from very, very close. Stop it! That'll bring his eyes out! Possibly, quite possibly. Senor, if I am forced to put another bullet in you, it would help no one. Castillo, first! Viegro. See? Si. If I knew where General Valero was. You would tell me, of course. Is it pity you do not know? I do. The boy has confided in you. Yes. It's the boy shown me. You wish to put a price on your information? I'll tell you. For nothing. The eyes of a man are precious. Where is Herald Volero? It's in the hearts of every one of your people that hate likes of you. Castillo Perez! Slowly! Very, very slowly! There is something you wish to say. Where my father is. Perez! Outside! Get men in the horses ready! Take the cross in your hand. Swear in the name of the Savior that what you say will be the truth. I swear on this behavior. Where is General Blero? The Rio Conchos. Six miles above Saucillo. I have great belief in your piety, senor. But I think I will insist on you coming with us. Your father will be very glad to see you. Castillo! Take him. Adios, senores! Gather up the guards at the gate and go. There is a business here I must finish. Andre. You will see to it that the men in the potter shed remain here for two days, Senor Corroy. I will see to it. You are dressed for traveling, Senorita. See? Si? You are not very good in the matter of the shed. I will be very good in Mexico City. I had thought it might be a question of pride. Pride is for men, Mayor. You bring no dresses with you, Senorita? I will buy them in Mexico. No. I will buy them in Mexico. But, Mayor Viegro. You are not going to Mexico. He is dead. 
Well. The shot will bring the others back. We're having company. Get under cover. You're gonna wind up a little short-handed, boss. Nobody to cook for them two that's left. We round up the Mexican army and we got Frank too. They were so surprised to see 20 drovers coming out of they gave up without a shot. 20 drovers? Who's watching the herd? Well, uh, the night guard. Had to do some shooting, huh, boss? No. Croyos took care of that. My father's army. Good luck fighting men, Frank. I have learned one thing about a battle such as my father fights. If you do not go to it, it will come to you. You ready to battle, Frank? See. Si. Good morning, signore. My people in Spanish Rock hold the Mexican soldiers in prison for a little while. We will give you time, Francisco Valero. I am leaving now. We go to Mexico also. You will not object if my daughter and I come along with you. We will not slow you down. Where are you going? Oh, I got too fat here. This uniform is a little too tight for me. I need a new one. Maybe your father will give me one, eh? I think he will. Adios, senor. Maria, I said some things. Oh, I deserve them. All of them except what you said on the rock in the moonlight. It was not meant to be a bribe, senor. Adios. Adios. Adios, Frank. <laughs> Some French fellow named Napoleon said an army marches on its belly. Well, I don't know much about armies, but I mighty well know that's true about trail drive. The beeves eat what they can, but the drovers are a little more particular. So one day I'll cook them pig vests with buttons. That's salt pork and beans. The next day they'll get Kansas City fish. That's salt pork. With brown berries. And that's beans. The day after that, they're liable to get sow belly. That's salt pork. This time with prairie strawberries, and that's beans. So the fourth day, I stay out of sight. My name's Wishbone, feeder of the Gill Favor outfit. Ain't you got nothing to do but stare at the back of my head? Well, Newton, that's about over, Mr. Wishbone. All the men are finished eating. That ain't gonna keep them from being hungry again at supper time. Then we got to feed them all over again. After that, it'll be breakfast, and then another noon camp. Hell, you mushy, there's got to be a stop to this. Somebody's got to feed them, Don't have to be me. Say, wish you. I. I hate to complain. No, but you will. The coffee you've been brewing lately has been a little bit strong. I swear I've been a couple of spoons trying to stir it. That's the way I make coffee. And we've had salt pork and beans six days running. Don't you think maybe we ought to have a change? No. Baji, what's the matter with him? I don't know, Mr. Favor. He didn't even bother to shave this morning. How can you tell? <clears throat> I, uh, 
noticed you didn't have your coffee, uh, I brought you some. You think I'm gonna drink that stuff? I'm trying to save what little stomach lining I got left. Quince, I'm getting old. <laughs> no, we all are. Not as fast as me. Tell you, I can't remember how many of these trail drives I've been on. Nor even how many trains. Good night, loving the Comstock, the Chisholm, now the Stalia. And I couldn't tell you the difference between any of them. Quince, there's got to be a time when a man quits these drives and settles down someplace. There's just one thing wrong with that, Wishmore. What's that? You wouldn't be happy doing anything else. I ain't so sure. I ain't so sure at all. <laughs> See that road? Yeah. Looks like a shortcut to me. If I figure I go that way, I'll be at night camping half the time. Are you just guessing? Well, I'm going to go that way anyway. Now, wait a minute, Wishbone. You can't well, Maybe go. you don't know it, but I got a real bad misery in my back. Well, maybe you ought to try driving standing up for a change. Oh, you like salt pork real good, don't you, Pete? Don't you threaten me. Ooh. Is that bad, huh? Go ahead and try it, Road. And get lost, huh? Huh. Me a mountain man for 20 years, and I'm gonna get lost. <laughs> get out! <laughs> hey, boss. Push bone back up again. Now what? Oh, you know how unhappy he's been lately. Uh, we're done now. That road up there is a shortcut across the hill just because he's got a sore back. Ah, let him have his big feet. I don't know what he's running into up there and might lead him into a cliff. And no such luck. He's just have to turn around and come back then. <laughs> What's that thing say? I don't know, Mr. Wishbone. Like a mining town. Most likely seven shacks and a hole in the ground. You ever been there? Oh, shut up. Why? for two wagons to pass on this trip, Mr. Wishbone. I'll have to back up then.
ain't got more than a mile to back up. Who's backing up? You're backing up. I ain't backing up for nobody or nothing, mister. Backing up for me, I got ten wagons behind me. Oh, stop bragging. Ain't you got something to say? I ain't got nothing to say. I'm a crook's lot. Yeah, I can believe it, too. Can't you, Mr. Dietrich? All right, you were. You don't have to back up if you don't feel like it. His, uh, his horses, they look real tired. You heard what he said, boys. The horses are tired. Well, I'm a man whose temper ain't easy to rouse. But you keep your hands off of that horse! You want to try? Down out of there. Now, why don't you get out? Why don't you try to make? All right, stay there then. This the fat cure for a bad back ever invented. I ought to punch you right in the nose. Well, why me? Because you're the nurse one handy. And Ray Moore. Oh, go look at the wagon. Box busted. That's all I can see, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, that's all, ain't it? Crew ain't never gonna let me live this down. You hurt real bad? I ain't been this bad since that time I fell off the roof in Fort Worth. Well, you just gonna let me sit here? Oh, I need a doctor. What are you looking for? A doctor. Oh, well, they ain't growing them on trees yet. Maybe they got one in Iron City. Get away. Spencer, you're the best bartender this side of St. Louis. So oh, what's so special about the other side of St. Louis? Mr. Grogan, you've had enough. Enough? I've only had a couple. You've had three. And supposing I want six. You won't get them in this bar. Now, you know better than that, Grogan. Who ever heard of a lady bartender? Well, Mr. Dietrich, hi, Miss Spencer. Hey, you want to discuss it with him? <laughs> hey. 
You know, Miss Spencer, I got no complaints, but how come you know so much about drinks? The late Mr. Spencer used to tend bar. We had an ideal marriage. He always discussed his work with me. I see. Uh, Miss Spencer, could I have another drink? Mr. Huber, you can. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. You know, Miss Spencer, when the miners get paid, you're going to get a lot of business. Only the ones that aren't married. <laughs> Excuse me. What for? Are you a doctor? Do I look like one? No. What do you have, son? Uh, doctor, ma'am. Aren't you feeling well? Uh, it's Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Wish what? Wishbone. He's hurt real bad. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, you take him right to my place next door. Go out the door, turn to the right, and go upstairs and tell him to wait. Well, Mr. Wishbone ain't the waiting tight, ma'am. He's been sitting outside quite a while. I'll be there in a few minutes. Well, he was sitting outside. Oh, the poor man. Gotta go upstairs next door. I don't have to go nowhere. I hear what that Jasper got to say. There you are, Mr. Dietrich. The books are balanced. Well, news ain't bad, folks. Ain't good, but it ain't bad. So, the way it works out, each one of you miners gets $23 for his share of the ore. $23? Why, that don't hardly pay for the groceries. Well, you uh, always got credit here at the Emporium. We already owe too much. The more we've been working, the less money we've been making. You question Miss Dimity's figures? Well, uh, I ain't questioning nobody's figures, but I'd like to know why we ain't getting as much as we used to. Well, uh, or ain't fetching as much as it uh, used to. I haven't heard as bad as anybody. You don't look to me like you're suffering much. You. Again. What do you know about ore? Nothing. Except if you say the price is going down, I say it's going up. That's about the same as calling me a liar, ain't it? You're brighter than I thought you was. No. He's not a well man. I feel fine. You better come along with me. Who's she? She's the bartender. I told her all about you. I told you to get me a doctor, not a bartender. I can help you, Mr. Wishbone. Sarah, get back to your bartending. Well, what right do you got ordering her around? She's my fiancée. That's what right I got. Oh, the poor woman. We ain't been properly introduced, ma'am. I'm Miss Spencer. How do you do? It's a pleasure, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, stop messing with the riffraff. Riffraff? And me responsible for 25 men and 3,000 head of cattle? You are? You're mighty well told I am. Now, what's all this got to do with the price of beans? Should I throw him out, Mr. Dietrich? I ain't got nothing to do with the price of beans, but it might have a lot to do with the price of ore. The way I heard it in San Antonio, the price is going up all the time. Of course, uh, you can prove what you just said. Well, yeah, I might just at that. Mushy, take that paper out of my hat. Now, open it up. San Antonio Daily Gazette makes my fit better. Now I'll give it to one of the miners. Railroad construction raises prices of iron ore. <laughs> well, I I didn't say that uh, that prices had gone any higher. I I said that prices wasn't the same as they used to be. I my expenses are going high too. That much higher, Mr. Dietrich? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dimity! Uh, yes, 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 Mr. Dietrich. Uh, I uh, guess I was in too much of a hurry when I balanced the books. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes. It should be 
$43 a share. Wow. All right, now she put the paper back in half. We sure do thank oh. you, Miss. We're alive. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! trying to do? Poison me? Well, it's just smelling salts, that's all. Uh, smelling salts? What do you think I am, a woman? With that beard? <sighs> what am I doing here? Well, some of the miners carried you upstairs. Well, why am I lying in bed middle of the day? Well, it's evening, and you're not a well man. Ah! Oh, I'm not a well man. We've got to do something about this arm of yours. Now, wait a minute. You're not a doctor. Well, I was a nurse during the war. Well, the war's over. What are you trying to do? Twist it off? Oh! Now, see if you can move your arm. I can't move my arm. I can move my arm. Well, I'll uh, be... Uh, uh. Language, Mr. Wishbone. Sorry, ma'am. Well, what are you doing standing there? You want me to sit down? I told you to get me a doctor. Well, she fixed your arm, didn't she? She didn't fix my back. Well, I wouldn't worry about that. <sighs> well, of course you wouldn't. It's my back. What's that? A bathtub. Who for? You. What month's this? Is that all, Miss Spencer? I think so, Mr. Logan. Is there anything else you want? All I want is to get out of here. You can go along now. Sure. Now, the best thing for your back is a hot bath. Now, you get right into that bath. Now, you get out of here. Shut up. I ain't said nothing. No, but you were going to. I'm going back to the herd and tell Mr. Favor what happened. Show him where the chug wagon is. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. I'll catch up as soon as my back's better. Sarah, I don't want any more of this foolishness. What do you want? Now, when are you coming back to the Emporium? I'm not. You mean that I got to go find myself another bartender? You also have to find yourself another fiancé, Mr. Dietrich. Oh, you ain't serious about this, Sarah. My name is Mrs. Spencer. Well, at least you could tell me why. You're not an honest man. Cheating the miners the way you did. I did, I did it for you. I, I did it so that I could build you the biggest, fanciest house in town we've married. I don't want the biggest or fanciest house in town. Well, what do you want? That whiskered little idiot upstairs? Goodbye, Mr. Dietrich. Look, if he ain't out of town in 24 hours, I'll, I'll kill him. Now, you got to hear. Mr. Wishbone, I was a nurse. Well, you ain't now. I'm a widow. Well, I ain't. Mr. Wishbone, I've got to massage your back. Now, you stay away from me, or so help me, I'll, I'll, I'll drown myself. Now, I mean it. Don't you come any closer. Now, we can <laughs> Mr. Wishbone. Don't mind if I do. You know something, Miss Spencer? I don't remember when I've had better spoon bread. Now, don't start trying to flatter me. Oh, I mean it. Well, that's the best breakfast I ever had. But it's none of my business, Mr. Wishbone. But don't tell me when you're out on the trail driving all those cattle, they don't give you a good breakfast. Uh, 
Not exactly. Well, I don't know how you stand it. I've been kind of wondering that myself. I guess I'd better be thinking about getting back to that herd. I'm an awful lot better, thanks to you. Well, your back ought to rest a few days longer. You think so? Oh, I certainly do. You've been working too hard. Well, that's right. And probably they don't even appreciate. Well, you're mighty well told that's right. Oh, why don't you go in and rest a while? I'll clean up the dishes. Uh, where'd you get this? Oh, my late husband took and trade from a drunken drover who... Well, some of them do drink, Mr. Wishbone. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. It sure is beautiful soul, though. Oh, you like your little joke, don't you? No, I mean it. Why, it's the most beautiful stove I ever seen. That's the kind of stove a man dreams about. Well, I suppose so. I guess I just never appreciated it. The other stove my late husband gave me is a wedding present. I guess it's the sentiment makes the difference. Wedding present. I don't suppose you want smoking in the park. Oh, don't be silly. I love the smell of tobacco. I must have took a longer nap than I thought. 3 30, it says. <laughs> That's been 3 30 ever since the late Mr. Spence passed on. There hasn't been anybody in town since then that could fix it. Well, maybe things have changed. What do you mean, Mr. Wishbone? Well, I mean, if I had a mind to, I think I could fix that clock. Would you? Sure. Mr. Wishbone, be careful of your back. Let me help you. Sorry, ladies, we're closed. Oh, no. oh, oh, but we're nearly off supplies. And I'm sorry. Oh, oh God. Let's try to get in. Please. Mr. Dietrich. Yeah. Do you realize how much money you're losing every minute you remain closed? No, oh, I can afford it. It'll ruin the books. It'll ruin their minds first. It'll teach them not to listen to every stranger comes into town with a lot of... Information about the real price of iron ore? Well, wait till that belly starts sticking with their backbones. They'll stop worrying about any price except the price I offer them, and they'll be glad to get that. That's right, Mr. Dietrich. Yeah. Mr. Dietrich. Has it occurred to you that if the miners get desperate enough, they might start hauling the ore themselves? No, they, they ain't got the wagon for it. Besides, none of them got the brains to think of a thing like that. I did. <laughs> Mr. Wishbone might. Never mention his name again. Yes, sir. I, I mean, no, sir. Gilbert. Yes. Go down to the mine. Tell the boys I'm shutting down the bar. Yes, sir, Mr. Dickert. I don't want to shit him up. Mr. Wishbone? 
In here, Miss Spencer. What on earth are you doing in the kitchen, Mr. Wishbone? Just cooking us up a little supper. You shouldn't be cooking. Well, let's not say anything about that after you taste it. Isn't there a little too much? Well, no, ma'am. Well, that's just a little light soup with thimble-sized cornmeal dumplings. You didn't have any clams, because I could have made you a chudder. Uh, there I got dropped biscuits frying. Might have been better if I'd had sourdough cake, but oh well. And that's the goulash. The what? The goulash. Uh, beef, salt pork, cracklings, uh, onions, carrots, peas, peppercorn, parsley. No, I couldn't find any parsley. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, that's all right. It'll probably turn out fine anyway. Oh, well, that's not too much for supper, is it? Oh, well, I, I meant the portions. Oh, well, that is kind of a lot, isn't it? I don't know any recipes for less than 25 men. 20? Uh, I thought maybe we might both be hungry tonight. Oh. Oh, excuse me. Crowding in on you like that, Miss Spencer, but we've just got to see Mr. Wishbone. Well, um, he's kind of busy now, but welcome to come in. Thanks. We need help, and well, Mr. Wishbone gave such good advice before. Maybe that... we'd have been better off without it, and without him. Amy, it ain't Mr. Wishbone's fault. What ain't my fault? Beatrix closed the emporium down. He said he ain't gonna sell us no more supplies. Just go on down to the next town and get your supplies. Probably be a lot cheaper. It ain't only that. He's refusing to take our ore to market anymore. He's bluffing. I don't think so. He's he's pretty mad. Well, what's he want? He wants you run out of town. Just because I showed him up for a crook? Well, that, that ain't the only reason. What's the other reason? I, uh, I told him I wasn't going to marry him. Well, that ain't got anything to do with me. Has it? Well, like I was saying, Beatrix's bluffing. If he closes down that emporium, he ain't going to make any money on them supplies. And if he don't haul ore, what's he going to do with all them freight wagons of his? Yeah. And don't forget, he's got all them men of his pay. Now, he's got good money invested in them supplies. If he holds on to them too long, they'll spoil it. No, sir. All you got to do is just stand firm. Dietrich will come around begging you to do business with him. He's right. Makes sense. Meanwhile, what are we going to do about supper? Well, it just so happened there's supper here enough for everybody. If you wouldn't mind having them. I wouldn't mind at all, Miss Wishbone. Come on in, everybody. <laughs> Half the miners in town are over at Miss Spence's house. Yelling for which one's hired, huh? Miss Cooking in Miss Spence's parlor. Mr. Dietrich, how about me and some of the boys going over there and spoiling the appetites? That's a good idea. No. I wouldn't want to upset Sarah that much. Well, the 24 hours you've been to get out of town are almost up. They were up exactly two hours and 14 minutes ago. Well, stop pushing me. This is an affair of the heart, you. Now, when dealing with affairs of the heart, you don't just settle them like that. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. Get him a drink. I don't think he really understands. Good night. I never would have believed a man could cook so good. Mm, that goulash, especially Mr. Wishbone, I'd give anything for the recipe. Well, I could be talked into parting with it. <laughs> Good, night. Good night, Mrs. Spencer, and thank you. Good night. 
You sure gonna miss that Mr. Wish when he goes back to the drive? If he goes back. Sarah, you ain't meaning. What? I suppose if he cut those whiskers off, he wouldn't be a bad looking man. I like his whiskers. It's just a matter of taste, Sarah. Does he know he ain't going back? Not yet. Good night, Mr. Wishbone. Good night. It's getting late, Em. I sure hope that ain't the last supper you're gonna cook for us, Mr. Wishbone. Good night, Miss Spencer. Good night. Good night. Sure are nice people. They're wonderful neighbors. A man don't get much chance to be friendly with neighbors on a cattle drive. Well, I suppose there are other things more important. I don't know. The years start to add up on you, you begin to wonder. What were you wondering about, Miss Wishbone? Well, if it ain't time to settle down, sink roots, make friends. Well, I can't say as to that, Mr. Wishbone, but if a man was to decide that's what he wanted, I can't think of a nicer place than Iron City. I wouldn't be surprised what you're right. Why don't you sit down and rest that back of yours? Smoke your pipe and I'll clean up the dishes. <laughs> you really didn't need to help me. Oh, well, I enjoyed it. There is a beautiful stove. Well, suppose the man was to come along and, well, decide to settle down in Iron City. What would he do? He ain't a miner. No. He wouldn't have to be. Not if he could cook as good as you do. Cook as good as I can? I wasn't talking about me, was I? Weren't you? I was. Well, most of the miners are single. If somebody was to open a good restaurant in Iron City, they'd be eating there every night and twice on Sundays. Well, that's a good idea. Oh, but I ain't even got a stove to cook on. I could give you mine. Oh, but I'd still need money for furnishings and stock and provisions and stuff like that. Well, I've got a little saved up, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, well, I couldn't use your money. Unless I was married to you or something. I can't answer that, Mr. Spook. We can't. You haven't asked me yet. Oh, well, I mighty well am, Miss Prancer. Oh, I'd be very happy to marry you, Mr. Wishbone. I guess you're gonna have to get used to calling me by my first name. What is it? Well, I got two of them. George Washington. Coffee, Mr. Faber? No, thanks. How long is it going to take for Bones back to get better? I don't know, Mr. Faber. Last I seen him, he's getting ready to take a hot bath. Well, he must be out of it by now. Well, he'll be back in a couple of days. I don't know. Mr. Wishbone's been talking about quitting the drive and settling down. He's been talking like that for the last 10 years. And yeah, now with a widow woman taking care of him like that. Widow? What widow woman? Mrs. Spencer. She's the one that's given a hot bath. Oh, no. Maybe better see if the men want any more coffee. Pete? Yeah, I know, I know. I shouldn't let him take the shortcut back there. Well, how would I don't know there was a widow woman waiting in them mountains? All right. Guess now we better start worrying about whether we'll live long enough until she learns how to cook. Oh, let me help you. Oh, what 
Didn't you be in the kitchen, Mr. Wishbone? Oh, no, when I set food out to cook, it's got a fan for itself. Oh, I feel that one. It's exciting, isn't it? I just love the name you picked for the restaurant. Cafe D. Iron City. Show you must have traveled a lot. Oh, well, I've been around. Who'd have believed just a week ago you'd be setting up your own place? Well, I can hardly believe it now. Well, you are happy about it, aren't you? Well, sure. Sure I am. Mrs. Spencer. Mr. Wishbone, I picked up all your gear from the camp and dropped it off at Mrs. Spencer's house. Oh, fine. Uh, you saw Mr. Favor and told him I quit him? Yeah. Well, how do you take it? Pretty broke up, huh? Well, all he said was, if that's what you want, it's all right with him. Must have been hiding his real feelings. Uh, how about the others? They carry on any? Not that I noticed. Well, and they give you my gear without any trouble? Yeah, as soon as I asked for it. Well, thanks. Mr. Hall. Evening, ma'am. What are you doing here, Noah Dietrich? Why, uh, me and the boys just uh, come over for some supper. That's not the real reason. Why did you come? I told you. Well, it's early. We're not serving you. Oh, we, uh, we don't mind waiting, Sarah. Mrs. Spencer, if you please. Say, where's the, uh, the man cook? I ain't never seen a man cook before. <laughs> well, you're seeing one now. I told them we weren't serving yet. We not only ain't serving yet, we ain't serving you at all. Why not? Our money's as good as anybody else's. You ain't hauling iron ore for the miners. You ain't selling them supplies. So you ain't eating here. How'd you like to go back to the kitchen and take us a cream puff? How'd you like punching the nose? You looking for a fight? You ain't big enough to give me one. Well, as long as you're so anxious, what? Oh, no. No. Grogan. Yeah? You're about the same size as Wishbone. I sure am, boss. Don't ever send a boy on a man's air. Now put him up. That was really the reason you came here, wasn't it? You want to know the real reason I came? Was to stop you from making a fool of yourself, Sarah. Jumping, jumping, my cream puffs are burning! Everybody and find yourself a table. Sir, I sure do admire your new fiancy. You know something, Miss Spencer? I would be a bit surprised if this town didn't elect Mr. Wishbone Sheriff. That is, if he stays around long enough. If he stays around long enough.
We did very well tonight, Mr. Wishbone. Well, that idiot don't know how to handle beefs. Well, you won't have to worry about things like that anymore. Uh, I guess not. Mr. Wishbone, are you going to miss being with the cattle drive? Of course not. The only interest I got in beef now is cooking them. Well, you've had a hard day. Why don't you try to get some sleep? Yeah. Sorry I come so late, Mr. Wishbone. Do you know how it is on a drive? I sure do, Mushy. Well, I'm glad to see you. You are? I sure am. Mr. Faber sent you, huh? Well, I kind of thought he would. Found out he couldn't do without me, huh? Yes, sir. They can get along without Wishbone for a day, two days, maybe even a week. But after that, everybody must be pretty sick of you cooking by now, huh? Everybody likes my cooking. That must be the first joke you ever made, Mushy. I ain't joking, Mr. Wishbone. You mean everybody likes your cooking? Sure. It just seems they don't have big appetites anymore. Well, if everything's so fine and dandy at the herd, why'd you come here? Well, I couldn't find some of your cooking supplies, so Mr. Faber sent me to ask you. Find them yourself. All right, Mr. Wishbone. That's the way you want it. I'll be riding back. Well, now, you don't have to hurry off. Why don't you stay the night? What for? Well, give me a chance. Maybe by morning I'll make up a list. Might help you out. Mr. Faber said to write right back. No, you stay right here. Now, go on in there and sit down. Now, don't forget, I got a lot of questions to ask you. I was with that herd a long time. Good evening, Miss Spencer. Good evening. Now, come on over here. Hello? How's grazing been for the bees? Kind of scanning, Mr. Wishbone. Mr. Faber says we've got to keep pushing her. Well, I think I'll take a little walk, Mr. Wishbone. Huh? I said I think I'll take a little walk. Well, that's a fine idea, Miss Spencer. Kind of scanty, huh? Well, that's rough on the beeves, rougher on the men, come to think of it. Now, that's a time when you've got to be especially sure the men are well fed. I guess so. Guess nothing. You know it. I'm telling you. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. Sir, I mean, Mrs. Spencer. What are you doing here? So I kind of hanging around, hoping you'd come out so I could have a talk with you. About what? Sarah, I've been a fool. That you have. I shouldn't have tried cheating them miners, and I shouldn't have closed the emporium, but I didn't know what I was doing. Why didn't you? Because I was mad. No. I was... because I was jealous. Mr. Dietrich, are you telling me... So I got... I got strong feelings for you. I, uh... I was thinking of taking a little walk. Would you... would you mind if I come along with... No. Oh, wasn't that a fine breakfast, Mushy? Yes, sir, except I ain't used to eating indoors. Well, neither am I, but ain't you glad I made you stay overnight? I don't know what Mr. Payer's gonna say when I get back. Well, now, don't you worry about him. He gives you any trouble, I'll tell him off good and proper. But, Mr. Wishbone, you ain't going back with me. Oh, I forgot. I guess I ain't. Mr. Wishbone. You are going back. I don't think I heard you right. You heard me right. What about me marrying you? And what about me running that pay? Oh, Mr. Wishbone, you don't really want either one of those things. No, that ain't so. I do want to marry you, and I want to run that cafe. I want to settle down and sink roots and... I want to go back to the herd. Well, what are you sitting there for? Mr. 
Mr. Spencer, I want to tell you how much I appreciate your understanding. And, well, if I was going to get married, you'd be the only one I'd want to marry. Thank you. What's going on? That stove is what you really fell in love with, Mr. Wishbone. Noah and I want you to have it. Noah? trying to do, Muddy. You get the horse to throw you? I was trying to do what you just did, Mr. Nolan. What did I just do? Oh, come to home. Get out of your saddle before your horse stops. Land on your feet. Well, always remember one thing, must you? When you're riding someplace, don't get there ahead of your horse. Try on that hill. Up that slope? Yeah, that way you won't hold so far. I'll try, Mr. Noah. Thank you. You watch me? I think I'm better. making a mistake, son. You talk to Mr. Faber. You with Mr. Faber's hurt, son? Well, what chance is that steers with Mr. Faber's hurt? What's going on here? Why don't you fire the warning shot? Well, he figures he's caught himself a rustler. Red-handed? Put that gun away, Mushy. Well, Mr. Nolan, put it away. You want to give him a chance to draw on it? Boss, can you tell me which way our herd is from here? That's right. Now, which way was this rustler hazing the steer? Did you ever hear of a rustler hazing the steer back into a herd? All I know is he's in that steer and he ain't got no right to. He's got every right, Mushy. This is Frank Miller. He's a herd cutter. You know what a herd cutter is? Yeah, a herd cutter. Yeah, he's a man hired by ranchers. Uh, he stops the herd, and he cuts out other people's strays that get mixed up in it. I think. That's right, Mush. How about all this left for you to apologize to Mr. Miller, and we'll get going. I guess I'm sorry, Mr. Miller. I think. If you want to show him how sorry you are, how about hazing that steer back to her? <laughs> you look slouch. <laughs> I could just tell. <laughs> Diamond 
red one is a diamond B. There's a circle J. There's a circle J. What's got an R on it? Oh, he sure can spot the brand. He's best. He's been doing a lot of years. Cut it for all the ranchers in the valley. He's hauling maybe 28 brands at once. You just missed one here. Yeah. Get it, Jeff. That ain't the first one either. I saw you cut out a couple we missed. Oh, when I first knew him, he never missed a one. It's a big hurry. He's probably tired. Oh, he's got a few years on him. Maybe his eyes aren't what they were. You never noticed anything, though. Well, sure I did. Oh. That do it, Frank? You're cleaner than ounce, Tooth. You can take him off the trail tomorrow morning. Good. We'll bet him down, then. <laughs> Quite a haul, didn't you, Mr. Miller? Yeah, better than a hundred head, I guess. Hey, you'd have cost us a pretty penny. How many years has it been that you've been working cattle? Well, now, there's a question. You know, I never did keep track. But this young whippersnapper here, he ought to be able to tell you. Who, oh, Mr. Favor? Yeah, I was cutting for you instead of horse. No, I ain't kept track neither. And how long's it been since you come up north here, Frank? Why, it's going on seven years now. That long. <laughs> hey, Roddy, you see Jim Quartz? Yeah, I sent him out brush beating for strays about an hour ago. Ain't he back yet? Don't see him, no worries. He ought to be back by now. You better take a look at him. Son, you better take a couple of men with you. Yeah, what for? Well, uh, he might have run into something. We've been having a little trouble around here lately. Trouble? What kind? Been losing beef. Indians? No, not around here. We don't know who it is, but uh, your man might just have run into something. See to it, Ruddy. Yeah. Funny thing, you know, I never noticed these losses till just lately. I couldn't have been too much then. Not all at one time, but just sort of a steady drain. You know, more than you could account for by natural causes like weather and disease. There's just no trace of them. All the stockmen in the valley are getting up and on. Well, everybody losing? Some more than others, but everybody, including me. Coffee's ready. Good. I can use some of that. You got me wrong. This is my fire. No, of course not. What do you do? What do you mean? Well, show it. You gotta listen to me. I'm with the trail herd. I'm just gathering strays. Sure. But that ain't one of your strays. He's got the brand of one of the ranchers in this valley. It ain't my fire either, nor my run iron. I came up and surprised him, whoever he was. But he had one of our strays. I yelled. He ran up that draw. Where do you find these tracks? There's tracks all over the place. What do you look like? Well, it's hard to see. Right bay horse with a blade. More than a hundred in the valley answer that description. Don't I at least get a trial? You've had it. 
We're tired of you drovers coming through the valley and fattening your herds at our expense. We're just going to make an example of you. Look, mister, at least give me a chance to prove what I say. My boss will vouch for me. I got to tell somebody. I don't want to die out here alone. You're going to die, Jim. I'll let him go. You his boss? One of them. Now, did you hear what I said? You, uh, you don't know who you're talking to, boy. I'm deputy sheriff of this county. You sure acting like one, mister. But it's your own fault. You drovers is the only way to fight you. I'm not with vigilant law. We'll abide by real law, but you ain't gonna hang one of our men, deputy sheriff or no. And I tell you, he's under arrest. Now, you say you abide by the law. You try to take him and you're going against it. What kind of law is putting a rope around a man's neck? If he's under arrest, why didn't you take him to jail give him a trial? All right, we'll take him in. But he'll hang anyway, don't worry. Rowdy, you gonna let him take me in? Yeah, well, maybe that's best for now, Jim. He has got some authority. We'll find out about this and get you out in no time. In the meanwhile, we'll, uh, we'll ride along with you just to make sure you get there safe. Spread makes seven too, Gil. I recommend it. Uh, maybe someday. Now, don't wait too long. I almost did. Might never had it at all if it hadn't been for my boy. Yeah, well, it's different for you. You got a son. Yeah, Andy. Nineteen already. Uh, that's right. I suppose it sounds kind of foolish, but, well, he's what all this is for. You know, a couple more years, he'd be able to take over. We built it up pretty good for him. Then I can cash my checks any time, and it won't matter. Say, where is that son of yours, anyway? Why, he's taking care of the ranch while I'm gone. He's a nice boy, Gil. I, I'd like you to meet him. Maybe we'll just ride down before you get away in the morning. Oh, I'd like that. Looks like your boy's coming in. Yeah, but too fast. Something's wrong. <laughs> What is it? Quincy's in jail. They had him strung to a tree when we came across him. For what? For rustling, I guess. He evidently came across the fellow who they were after, and he got stuck with the evidence. Evidence? Yeah. A down calf, a fire, and a running iron. No wonder. The mood they're in, just a running iron would be enough. Uh, Quince tried to tell him they were making a stake. He'd have been dead if I hadn't gotten there while I did. They had law on their side, that's why. I couldn't talk him free or anything. Think he's safe in this one, Frank? Oh, for a spell, but they'll probably have a pretty speedy trial. I left Bailey in there and told him to send word if anything went wrong. Gil, you figure this fellow of yours is telling the truth? Quince, he's one of the best men I got. I trust him as far as Wood Roddy or you. He's no rustler. It's a favor, look. Looks like a whole deli dish. More like a posse to me. Frank, the whole kit and caboodle. Town fathers, major stockmen. <sighs> Who's the boss, Frank? This is Mr. Gil Favor, gentlemen. One of the best trail bosses in the business, and I ought to know. I had a hand in his training. Gil, this is Morgan Shaw, sheriff. This is John Rye, mayor of the town. That's, uh, Marsh Cox. I understand you're holding one of my men. That's right. But he won't be held long, I can assure you. I'm glad to hear that, because I can assure you that he's innocent of the charge. How can you be sure of that? I know the man, that's all. Well, I don't. And I don't know you. For all I know, he could have been acting under your orders. What do you mean by that? I mean you trail herders always manage to leave with more stuff than you come with. Now, wait a minute, Morgan. Now, Frank, you stay on this. Why should I? I just told you the man's a friend of mine. Maybe that don't make it any better, Frank. Now, wait a minute. 
What are you trying to do? Accuse me of being in some illegal deal with Mr. Favor here? Oh, Frank, you know better than that. We're not trying to accuse you of anything. Well, then what do you mean? Well, you know as well as we do that we're losing stock some way. You yourself are. The only thing we can figure is the trail herds and pick it up as they go through. Then you are accusing me. You're accusing me of not doing my job. No, no, Frank, not that exactly. But it is possible that one time or another you do miss a few sometimes? Yes, I do, because my eyes aren't what they once were. Maybe I should have admitted it and asked for help. But I want to tell you this. I didn't let through all the stock that we've lost. Take a look at that holding corral over there. That's what I cut out of Mr. Favors, or over a hundred head. Well, that's hardly what we mean, Frank. Seems like a lot of cattle for them to have picked up just passing through. And help picking up strays going across a range, you know that. Then I cut them all out. That's my job. Now you take a look at the mean herd. You won't find one, maybe two, with our brand. Maybe not. How many would we find if we could turn them inside out? Yeah, and after all, we find one of his men with a hot fire and a ring iron now. How many other irons are there in this crew? I know a raw, blotched brand when I see one. Maybe you weren't watching for him, Frank. You were reading our herds. But we're holding this herd until we can check it thoroughly. It's all right, Frank. You go ahead, check the herd, satisfy yourselves. We will, first thing in the morning. It's getting too dark tonight. But we'll leave a guard here to see that you don't move anything. All right. If you've satisfied yourselves, there's nothing here, then you'll let my men go. No, I didn't say that. You're not having stolen cattle wouldn't prove innocent. Anyway, that's for a jury to decide. What jury? You and your friends? Tell you something, mister. You better let them go. You're going to be in for trouble. Well, now, you just try that, Sonny. We're not afraid of trouble. We'll be ready for you, and maybe you'll join your friend. Frank, you coming? No, I'll stay here. Sit yourself. Fair, yes. But who's going to prove him innocent? I guess that's up to us somehow. Yeah, but how? Just going to have to flush out the man who really did it. Well, what happens if we can? I don't know. Time. How about Quince? He's all right. I just checked the jail. I don't have to worry about Morgan Choi. He's an honest sheriff. And he keeps him safe until trial. When's that? They got it set for three. They're not waiting for the circuit judge. They're for a county committee. Vigilantes? Well, it's better than no trial at all. Oh, well, guess is Andy. Andy, this is Gil Favor. Howdy, Andy. Glad to meet you, Mr. Favor. My father says you're a great man. There's another cow hand. There's few things greater than that. Not to my father. Well, now, they don't come any greater than he is. Yeah, I know. Uh, sorry about all this, putting you to all this trouble, Mr. Favor. We're not being very hospitable, are we? Uh, I guess it can't be helped. Are you ready, Favor? We'll get him over there. My men will squeak him through. Your men will hold and drive him through. That satisfy me? Let's get it over with. See anything? What about blotch brands? No. 
You wouldn't take my word. Look, Frank, all I know is we're losing stock somehow. Maybe that over hasn't got any. Maybe he has. What do you mean? Maybe he's got some way of getting them past us. Maybe he sent them around and threw the past out of the valley. You think he could have done that without me finding it out? I don't know, Frank. Now, wait a minute. I don't care what you think about me. Nobody in 40 years has questioned Frank Miller's integrity, and you've got no call to now. You're doing an injustice to a friend and a neighbor. Nobody's questioning Frank's integrity. Personally, I'm convinced you had nothing to do with the favor. Sorry we didn't take Frank's word for it. I hope you'll forgive us for that. Anyway, you're free to take the herd on. Not without my man, Quinn. He has to stand trial before a vigilante court. I assure you, he'll be treated fairly. If you want to testify for him, you may do so. If you have any evidence in his behalf, you can present it. Well, you know I haven't got any evidence. How could I? But I know the man is innocent. If you can prove it, he'll go free. I promise you. It's up to you. I'm warning you. I'm not going to let any vigilante court hang any man of mine, especially when I know he's innocent. Like our sheriff told you, we don't want trouble. But if it comes, we can take care of it. If he's sentenced to hang, he'll hang. What are we gonna do? First of all, show me where that Brent iron was. to go on. Not enough to prove anything. Not enough to convince anybody Quince was telling the truth. I was convinced when you vouched for him. See where those trucks lead. Mr. Favor, looks like we lost him. That fella sure know what he's doing. Well, now what do we stand? Well, if we can't track him out, we're gonna have to think him out. People must have talked this over. Aren't there some suspects? Well, first we thought it might be Indians, but they would have left sign. Or would any outside bunch of rustlers, and we found no sign at all. Well, then it must have occurred to you that it might be somebody from here in the valley. Yeah, we talked about that, but that's just a blank wall. You see, every stockman is a solid citizen, and every one of them has been losing stock. Now, there's nobody in the town that could be doing it. Why not? Well, too big an operation. First off, where would they hold the stock? And where would they sell it? Except to pass and herd. Now, that's why the suspicions finally got to rest on you fellas. Yeah, I see. Isn't there any local market? Oh, sure. Town butcher. <laughs> he couldn't sell that much meat in 10 years. Of course, a tannery buys hides, but uh, well, what would he do with the carcasses? Where do they get the hides? They buy them from all around. Of course, most of them come from Fort Hawks. That's the army post over Warm Creek. How far is that? Oh, 20 miles. Less over the hill. And where do they get their beef? Oh, they buy from all of us all around. It's a matter of policy, they say, to spread out their buying so nobody will accuse them of playing favorites. Why, some of the stock's driven in from three, four counties away, I'm told. So then nobody but them would know exactly how much beef they're buying from this valley? No, I suppose not. And it's the 
Biggest local market. Oh, fine. Well, then that's where we'll check in first. Who's in charge there? Uh, Colonel Cook. Of course, you'd want to see the supply officer. Uh, Andy, what's that fellow's name? Uh, uh, Lieutenant L, I think. Oh, yeah. Andy took over the last stock we sold him, but it's quite a while ago. Anyhow, he'll tell you who you want to see. All right. Now, wait a minute. Don't you want us to go with you? All right, and I can handle it. If we go back to town, keep an eye on Quince. Maybe you can delay the trial until we get back with what we can find. Uh, which way do we go? Well, right over the hills, follow this wash up to the side. You'll see it down the canyon, down the valley there. Right. We'll be back as soon as we can. Well, I'll do what I can. Good luck to you. Tell me where I might find the supply officer. Lieutenant Hill, uh, I just saw him down in the supper store. Thanks, Corporal. run out of tobacco. I'm sorry, Lieutenant. What's the most important item in a sutler's store? Tobacco. Next time you run out, you lose your franchise right then and there. Lieutenant Hill? Yes. What can I do for you, gentlemen? Howdy. My name's Favor. I'm boss of a trailer that's going through. A little short on men, a little long on cat. I just wondered if I could sell you some beef. I'm afraid not. We're pretty well stocked right now. I see. You uh, buy all your beef around here? From the ranches around here, yes. Yeah, well, you get a better price that way. But um, I'd be willing to give a good price, too. No, thanks. You're not even asking my price? Say, you must be getting a good one. I'm busy. Uh, you were buy all from the same source, huh? Look, Mr. Favor, let's drop the pretense. I've heard about you and your trouble in town. Military intelligence, huh? Something like that. Now, why'd you come here? What do you want of me? Just some information. What information? Some rustling some cattle. I think they're selling them to you. That's absurd. Yes. Then you won't mind telling me who you're buying your stock from. Well, I've already told you. We buy it from many sources. I just want to know who they are. You don't believe me, huh? I'd just like to see the records. They're government property, Mr. Favor. I couldn't show them to you if I wanted to. I'm the authority. Who has, Colonel Cook? No. Nobody this side of Washington. Look, this means a man's life, an innocent man's. His innocence or guilt doesn't concern me, Mr. Favor. I simply haven't the authority to show you those records. Now, you're going to have to take my word that the charge is absurd. I have nothing to hide about the way I conduct my office. Nobody's accusing you of anything. You're suggesting I knowingly bought stolen cattle. No, I'm suggesting somebody selling you stolen cattle, which is a much different thing. You could be buying good faith. Now, all I need to know is who you've been buying the most stock from over in the valley lately. And I cannot tell you. Oh, won't? Let's put it this way, Mr. Favor. I wouldn't if I could. All right. That's all I need to know. You know he's lying? He's in it, all right. Probably buying at cut prices and pocketing the rest. Chairs are like that will leave the army rich. Won't be the first. What are we going to do? How are we going to prove things? Let's look over their beef. Way, gentlemen. You can leave the way you came. Just going around? This is government property. I have to ask you to leave. Oh, 
see anything? Uh, it looked like several brands. Only one I could make out was Sir Lay, though. I wonder if there's any other way we'd get back to those pins without getting shot. Not before dark. I got another idea, though. We'll make tracks. We must have brought them in somewhere. So let's see if we can cut trail on them. This looks like a regular Santa Fe trail for Chris. The way these tracks go, or which way? I know. I guess hopeless, you know. Maybe. Let's try a little bit further. scanning till the prints heal. Drives them to the wash over the hill to port. Pretty simple. Now all we gotta do is find out whose brand is the Cirque And I guess they'll have that in town, huh? Let's go. Winx is gonna be a happy man. James Quince, the jury finds you guilty. The sentence is hanging. Get up. Now, wait a minute. You can't do this. Favor may show up at any time. Some new evidence. You don't want to hang an innocent man. The verdict's been reached, Frank, and I think they're right. But you don't have to rush right out to the nearest tree. You can wait a little, can't you? We've waited long enough. We might have done it yesterday and save all this trouble. Well, I'm not sorry about that, but it's legal now. There's no sense putting it off. No, Frank. This ain't the kind of thing you want to sit around and think about. Well, you might lose your nerve, huh, Jim? Morgan, I'm pleased. Get out of my way, Frank. Go on. I'm sorry, Quince. You did everything. You couldn't, Mr. Miller. Sure, thank you. Go on, Quince. Come on, let's go. I know who's doing the rustling. Who? I don't know his name, but I know his brand. I know where he holds the stock until the brand's healed. And I know where he's selling them. All right, who? What's the brand? The Circle A. You know what you're saying? Yours, Frank? Show me. Just show me. And you better be right. All right. Put him back in jail. We'll have to see about this.
All right, where are they? They're gone. This is the man you called your friend, Frank. It's no lie. Look at all those tracks down there. Joe, there's cattle all over this range. They'll go anywhere there's grass and water. Now, what we want to see are those blotched brands you were talking about. Where are they? Well, they couldn't have been taken far. All we have to do is look up one of these washes here. And waste more time? Oh, we're sick of your lies. That's right. Pretty evidence you're just stalling for time. It could be a trick. There are men trying something back in town. We better get back and finish it. Great friends, you and a man like Frank this way. What are we gonna do? Better get back to town. Thing. What are you doing here, Fever? You might as well move on, unless you want to stay for hanging. Oh, wait a minute, Marsh. That's all I'm asking you to do is wait a minute and listen to me. Oh, I didn't know the Circle A was Frank Miller's brand. But even if I did, why would I pick that particular brand? If hadn't really seen it on those cattle. Come on. I don't believe Frank is involved in this any more than you do. Besides knowing what kind of a man he is, saw how it hit him. Sorry for that. But it does point up the fact that there is a logical suspect. Who? Oh, I should think that'd be pretty easy to figure out. It'd have to be somebody who could sell the brand. Somebody who had the power to sign Frank Miller's name on a bill of sale over at Fort Hawks. Andy? No, I don't know anything about the boy. I only saw him yesterday. He seemed all right as far as I could see. But he does own a bay horse with a blaze, just like Quincy saw. Well, is it possible? He has free rein handling his father's stock. He has taken cattle over to Fort Hawks for sale, alone. Well, what about the boy? Well, he's only been here a couple of years. Not very much like his father, we know that. I guess he grew up with his mother in town, you know, while Frank was out working cattle somewhere. But that don't convict him of rustling. You're letting this man throw dust in your eyes, turn you away from the verdict the court's already brought in. We're not turning away from anything, Marsh. I don't take Fibber's word any more than you do, but he has got a point, and it is possible. Yes, it is. He may be stalling, he may be making wild guesses, but he has got a point. Only you'll have to prove it. That's all I ask is a chance to do that. And the promise that you won't try hanging Quince while I'm away. I'll give you an hour, no more. Ow. All right. I'll be back, Jim. I thought you were in town. I, I was just coming in myself. I want to talk to you, Andy. Can't it wait? No, it can't wait. Andy, for two years, I...
tried to get close to you like I figured a father and a son ought to be, but for some reason I just can't do it. I guess maybe it's my fault, but... Well, the uh, time has come when you and me got to understand each other. Now you say, Pa. Andy, all my life, I tried to live the way my dad taught me. Honest, straightforward. Give full measure to every man. Double deal no man. Do a good day's work and lay your head on the pillow at night with no sense of guilt. Now, that's the way I've lived. That's what the name Frank Miller stood for all over the West for better than four years. Yeah, I know, Paul. Pa. Wait. Son, if there's anything you ought to tell me, uh, why don't you tell me now? What things, Paul? Well, if you have made any mistakes, it's good time to get them off your desk. No, no, there's nothing. Well, take your medicine, wipe the slate clean. There's nothing, I tell you. Look, son, if you've got a man's life on your conscience, I don't know what you're talking about. Andy, look, look, you know how I feel about your being here, how I feel about your future. This is your place, Andy. The circle A, A is for Andy. I don't want it, I never wanted it. I hate it here. I'm going back to St. Louis. What? I like you, Pa. Can't you understand that? I want to get out of here, and I'm going to. Get out of my way, Pa. I'm through. Stick over to the sheriff's office. Roddy, you come on with me. Thanks. Find Andy Miller yet? No, I doubt he's even gone. He's probably still out at the ranch. We haven't got time to go out there now. I got another idea, though. Well, what's that? The tannery. Third link of chain. We should find the evidence we need there. Lieutenant Hill may be here. Could be. Well, it's more Andy. The other fellow found through the tanner. The third link in the chain. Andy steals the kettle, Hill buys him, and the tanner turns the hides without examining brands too close. A very neat operation. Maybe it's too neat, but we can't prove nothing. We can try. Come on. D. Was hard to blotch that one. I guess this is what we've been looking for. Go on back, get Sheriff, bring him here. I'll see what else I can find. All right.
No, don't touch it. Put your hands up slow. Got quite a little business here, Randy. Better than ranching, huh? Guess you're just not a common like your father, huh? No, and I don't want to be either. Well, you'd rather steal from him and his friends and shoot at him from ambush? Mr. Favor, this is a gun I'm holding. I can use it in my will. You clear out now. Take your herd and go. Tomorrow morning, I'll meet you on the other side of the pass with 30 head of prime beef. No questions, no problems. You're forgetting one thing, aren't you? man named Quince. Yeah, well, you can manage without him. Yeah, but can he manage without me? I don't think so. I don't think I like your proposition either. Take it or leave it. I don't think I have to do that either. Don't you? They never find a trace of you in the line pit. They never know what happened to you. I think they would. See, Hardy's already going for the sheriff. They'll know the whole thing by now. And I don't think you could get rid of all the evidence quick enough. Brad! Matt! He knows we gotta get rid of these guys. Help me throw them in the line pit. Don't blame yourself, Frank. Well, I had my dreams of the future. I guess I forgot he might have had his own. Circle A. Still a good rash, Frank. And you still have plenty of good friends. Sorry, Frank. Well, Gil, there's one thing you might remember if you ever have a boy. It's, it's pretty hard for the son when he figures his dad is such a great man. I sure didn't help any what I said to him. Oh, it wasn't your fault. None of it. Mr. Favor, I guess you know what I'm going to say. Forget it. No, no, I'll never do that. But there's one thing I'd like to ask you. Yeah? Could you relieve me of cutting and branding duty for a spell? What for? I've had my belly full of rope. Yeah. wouldn't like you killing a customer. You sure? That's Staley, all right. There's a kerchief tied to his bridle. We'll pick him up near the Arroyo and take him the rest of the way in. Kane, wait a minute.
Those ain't customers. Frank? No. If you miss, they can make a run for it. Frank, meet Staley and get him out of sight. Don't bring him in till we get rid of those two. You know the water ain't so bad around here. Uh, the grays will do. This ain't exactly the garden spot of Texas, though. Well, as long as there's grass and water, the boss ought to be satisfied. Might even hold the herd over here and let them rest a few days. How are you? This is Private Range. Didn't see any signs posting it. Everybody around here knows it and keeps off. Yeah, but we're just passing through. We're scouting for a herd trailing to Abilene. Abilene's north. You're riding south. He said we were scouting. We're looking for grass and water. We're just riding back to the herd to report to the boss. Find what you want? Yeah. Anywhere up above there will be fine. Maybe you're going to tell us that this uh, whole range is private, huh? No, maybe about it. Well, maybe I don't believe you. Then I'll let the boss spell it out for you. No, Rowdy. Go ahead. Save us all a lot of talk. Nah, I'd rather see if your boss can spell. <laughs> before that door will. Oh, well, we just didn't want you forgetting us, that's all. When are you gonna get us out of here? When do we see the boss? Right now? Come on. I don't know. I really don't know if I'm ready yet. Yeah, Sid, come on! Stop it, Jess. Did you hear me? Put that gun away. What are you doing here? Trying to keep you out of trouble, but it looks like I'm a little late. Yeah, well, we were getting pushed around a little. Figured we were due for some pushing back. We're both due now. Any time. That's enough, Jess. Get back to work. These are your men, then, Mr. Favor, I presume? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Hastings. Rowdy Yates, our ramrod, Pete Nolan, our scout. Yeah, pleasure to meet you, Mrs. Hastings. I owe you gentlemen a deep apology. Believe me, I didn't want to keep you locked up like that, but my foreman insisted on it till he could ride back to the herd and check out your story. Oh, I'm sure you can understand. Running a ranch like this alone, it's pretty difficult for a woman. Much too often, strangers try to take advantage of me, and my foreman does try to see that I'm not bothered. Uh, there's no two ways about that. He was devoted to my husband. When he died two years ago, Jess offered to stay on and help me. I hope you'll forgive him. Oh, yeah. Well, no harm done at all. Please feel free to use my range, Mr. Faber. As a matter of fact, if you'll cut further east about three miles, you'll find much better graze on the flats and the valley. Oh, no, no, no. Flats will be fine. Thank you. I insist. You'd be doing me a favor. The valley's terribly overgrown. Your cattle would clear it out for me. Oh, yeah. They'll do that all right. Well, thank you, Mrs. Hastings. It's been very kind of you. Not at all. It's nice to have met you. Same here. Hey, what about our guns? Uh... Oh, uh, turned over to me. Come on.
Jones letting Staley in when the Drovers are still here. Frank couldn't keep him holed up. He was getting spooky. Anyway, he's an itchy gun. Oh, is he? Now, wait a minute. Why are you letting them Drovers on the range? There are over 20 men out there. Every one of them a jump at a chance for that reward money. You shouldn't have let him in. It would have been better to have them camp on the flats. It would have been better to keep them off altogether. Jess, when are you going to learn that to fight trouble makes it bigger? To ride with it makes it disappear completely. Can you prove you're Tom Staley? My references. Five thousand dollars. You're a valuable man, Mr. Staley. Well, the Bankers Association thinks I'm pretty valuable. So do I. That'll be five hundred dollars for the first week. Five hundred? And a hundred a day thereafter. The longer you stay here, the more dangerous it is for me. But for what? This dirty little hideout? For excellent accommodations. And for the work of getting you in and out of the territory, and for the day and night protection of my men. Five hundred dollars or start riding alone. All right. Yes, I'll take care of you. You know, for that kind of money, seems like I ought to get a little personal service. That's the only personal service you'll get from me, Mr. Staley. What's wrong, boss? So I'll have his brains removed riding a horse like that. He's doing more hanging on than riding. Yeah, without for long. Take it easy, you hurt yourself. Now stay away from me. Keep away. Now look, we're just trying to help you out, mister. No, now leave me alone. Please, I didn't mean any harm. I was just trying to do my job. I don't know what you're talking about. We just saw you take a spill and come over to find out if you hurt yourself. Oh. Sorry, I... I thought that you were... It's those men. They're the ones who were chasing me. Oh, yeah. That's that foreman, Kane. Yeah, he sure gets around, don't he? Oh, please. Let me take your horse. I gotta get away from here. I'll take it easy. Nobody's gonna hurt you. Thanks, favor. We'll take him now. Oh, uh, no. Hey, mind telling me what this is all about? I don't see that's any concern of yours. True, true. But, uh, must be something mighty interesting, considering he half killed himself trying to get away. What'd he do? Steal something? He was trespassing. Mighty persnickety about trespassing, ain't you? I've got my orders. The boss don't like strangers. I was only trying to do my job. And what's that? I'm a government census taker. Census taker? That's right. I'm supposed to find out how many people live in this territory and what they all do. That's the only reason I went near his ranch. He wouldn't listen to me, accuse me of spying. Well, that sounds reasonable enough to me. Not to me. You gonna turn him over? Not if he ain't done nothing wrong. I'll decide that. I'll tell you what, you've got a legitimate complaint against him. Uh, we could go in and turn him over to the sheriff, huh? The boss did you a favor letting you use this range. You've got a funny way of showing your appreciation. Well, I'll settle that with her personal. Guess you got no reason to hang around, have you, Kane? I guess you'll be all right now, Mr. Uh... Uh, Gedwell, Martin Gedwell. Hi, my name's Favor, Gil Favor. This is Rowdy H. Pete Nolan. I'm happy to know you, gentlemen, and uh, believe me, I'm most grateful. I only hope I haven't caused you any trouble. Oh, that kind of trouble we like. I'm afraid your horse is long gone, but uh, we can lend you one from our string. You just leave it in town, we'll pick it up tomorrow morning. Oh, you'll be going into Paso Grande yourself? Yes, some of us. Well, if it wouldn't be too much trouble, could I wait and go with you? Uh, yeah, sure. I'd appreciate the company. 
course. Huh? Come on, you can ride with me. Oh, thank you. I'll get my hat. Well, this far as it goes, Mr. Gidwell. Got to get my supplies here. This is fine, thank you. Well, don't look like you're going to have any trouble at all tallying this town. I don't look like enough people to make a good crowd. I couldn't care less. I'm finished. What do you mean, finished? You mean you counted them already? No, I'm quitting. When I took this job, I didn't agree to being shot at and chased all over the country. Well, you can't just leave a whole town out. As far as I'm concerned, the whole state can be left out. Well, goodbye. Thanks again for your trouble. You know something? He's going to mess things up to a fairly well. That's water. Well, the census. He's quitting. He isn't going to count the folks in this town. Be just the same as if they weren't even born. Yeah, well, that ain't going to bother them none. Well, it is so. It's going to throw everything off. Well, there won't be enough representatives in Congress, and the government will be all lopsided. Oh, they'll vote in some kind of law and take care of that wish. We'll be over in the barbershop if you need it for anything. Not me. I'll be in a saloon. Yeah, but... We'll see you later. Fine bunch of citizens they are. Well, I gotta go pick up the mail. I think I'll get some lunch. I got a real hankering for some good restaurant food. No offense, Wish. Sir, but I just couldn't do it. You couldn't find out anything? Whether there were any other buildings on the ranch? Uh, how many men they had? Oh, a whole army, as far as I'm concerned. They all came after me. Sure, they would have killed me if those drovers hadn't interceded. Drovers? Yeah, some men with a bunch of cows. Thieves, please. Hmm? Oh, whenever. They saved my life. They let me spend the night with them and brought me into Paso Grande this morning. <laughs> Very interesting group of men, too. Amusing. Especially that cook. <laughs> Can you imagine a man with the name of Wishbone? <laughs> no. Wishbone? Yeah. Was the trail boss Gil Favor? Did you meet Rowdy Yates, Pete Nolan? Ah, uh, yes, I believe those were some of the names. Well, what do you know? In any event, sir, I'm sure you understand why I just can't continue. I'm not suited for this kind of work. Yeah, yeah, sure, don't. You just forget about it. Here. Here's your uh, last week's pay. Oh, but I uh, can't accept it. I didn't get you the information you wanted. Believe me, the information you did get is worth twice that money. like that should stay hidden. <laughs> Clay, Clay Forrester. How are you, Roddy? What are you doing? Well, I'll be... Hey, hey Pete! Hey, look who's here. Oh, well, it's a bad penny. <laughs> Glad to see you too, Pete. Hey, uh, how come you're out pushing the herd? Oh, Mr. Faber, he gave us a day off, so we're just messing around town. I thought you went west somewhere. Will you please sit down? Hmm? Oh. Right. Oh, I was heading west, but then I, uh, I got this job and, uh... Wait a minute. Look at that. Roddy, you won't believe it. Look at it. What? You a lawman? 
Will you sit down and stay put? Oh. Like trying to shave a man on horseback. <laughs> well, I got this uh, job with the government, and they made me a marshal to give me some authority. Authority to do what? Well, it's pretty important work. Collecting information and things like that. Yeah, well, what kind of information? Well, uh, I'm taking the census. Uh, you mean like that fella Gidwell? Yeah, he works for me. At least he did. Uh, I'm gonna have to handle this territory by myself now. You mean you're a nose counter? Oh, well, Mr. Favor, here's about this. Hey, Roddy, Pete, I found 23 people. <laughs> well, what hole did you climb out of? How are you, Wishbone? I never thought I'd see you again, except dangling from a rope. How'd you manage? Well, same as usual. Oh, my slippery elm tongue ears. Oh, but you gotta be careful now, Wish. I mean, uh, check the badge there. You're talking to a marshal. Marshal? Yeah, he's just the fellow you want to see about those 23 people you counted. He's boss census taker around here. <laughs> you? <laughs> <laughs> Look, if you boys want to have a meeting, we got a nice town hall down the street. <laughs> Come on, tell us how you go about it. What do you do when you count up to ten? Take off your shoes and socks? Yeah, how about little kids? Do they count for a half or a whole? Why don't you two find out for yourselves? Huh? Yeah, I'll give you jobs. Right now, all three of you. Well, us be census takers? That's right, there's nothing to it. I give each a certain territory, and then you ask everybody the same questions. Nothing could be easier. Yeah, uh, go on. Oh, why not? The job pays hard cash. Since when do you have any objections to that? Oh, I got better things to do. I yeah, know you're talking about it. Mr. Favor wouldn't let us do a thing like that. Now you leave Favor to me. Did he come in town with you? Yeah. Probably at the restaurant. All right, you meet me there in about half an hour. Your job's to be waiting for you. We go to work for him. I'm going to pin my money to my long johns. Nope. Absolutely not, Clay. My men work for me, nobody else. They work full time. I'm in a jam if I don't get help. My orders are to finish up this territory by tomorrow, and I can't do it alone. Sorry. That's too bad. Boys are really counting on that extra money. Well, let's forget it. Tell me, how's the uh, herd doing? All right, so far. How many head you got by now? Hmm, a little over 3,000, I figure. Well, don't you know exactly? <laughs> no, what trail boss doesn't know exactly. Lose a few head one day, pick up a few uh, strays the next. Impossible to keep exact count. Uh, that's a shame. Hmm? I'm really very sorry, Favor. Sorry about what? Well, I've got to have a tally on that herd. An exact count. I thought you were supposed to be taking the census on people, not cattle. On people and their property. And this herd is your property, isn't it? <laughs> Expect me to count them now? No, oh, no, that's my job. I've got to do it personally, but uh, I may be a little slow working alone, you know. But I'll be finished up by weekend. Weekend? We're pulling out tomorrow. I'm sorry, Favor. Not until I get an exact count. It's the law. And uh, don't try to stop me. I've got all the authority that goes with this star. Oh, blackmail, huh? Oh, no. Where would you ever get an idea like that? <laughs> Of course, if I could get the help I need, say two or three men, I, I could tally that herd tomorrow. Rules don't change for anyone. None of the men hold down two jobs. That's what I like about you, Favor. You stick to your principles. Mm -hmm. I'll be out to tally the herd as soon as I finish up here in town. Ought to take me um, oh, a day or so. No, I mean, we run into um, Rowdy, Pete, Bushbone. You tell them they're fired. Fire? Well, I can sign back on once they get the herd tallied. Well, that won't take long, I promise you. I figured. You live here alone, Miss Blake. Uh, don't forget Johnny. Oh, you didn't say anything about anybody else. Where is he? Uh, Johnny? Come on, Mr. Frazier, you gotta answer these questions. It's the law. Government wants to know. Why? Come on, will you please give me your first name? You already got my last, ain't that enough? No, it ain't. Albert. This here is your occupation. I own the stable. Yeah. H. 
The stable or me? You, of course. You want to draft me again, huh? Look. How old are you, Mr. Frazier? Forty-five. Thank you very much, Mr. Frazier. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You sure that's all? You know something? The government's sure full of busybodies. L O P E Z Lopez Manuel Conchita. Now, age? Sí. El señor quiere saber cuántos años tenemos. ¿Qué? Tú o yo? No. Es mí. Yo. ¿Cuántos años tengo? 41 años. ¿Yo? De tonto, no sabes que tienes 41 años. Ya estamos casados por 20. 41. And your wife? ¿Cuántos años tienes tú? 38. No digas que tengo 38. ¿Qué le importa al señor? No te mato si dices que tengo 38. Solo dile que tengo 21 años. Eh, 21. And your occupation? Eh, ¿Qué clase de trabajo hago yo? ¿Tú? ¿Trabajo? Nada. Don't work. But how do you support yourself? ¿Cómo mantenemos la familia? ¿Eh? ¿Cómo mantenemos nuestra familia? Si no era por mí, que soy la bandera cada día, no comería más nada la familia entera. She washed the clothes. And how many children, if any? Tenemos a Carmencita, Ricardito, ahí de Irene, Juanito. ¿Cuántos hijos tenemos? 14 niños. Oh, ¿13? ¿14? Te digo 14. No, oh, ¿13, niña? Yo soy el papá y yo soy la mamá. Come on, make up your minds, will you? Uh, please, señor, please. We have just lost a little child. Please. Y Sarita, sí. y Lupita, y Miguelito. ¿A qué trata? ¿Qué se olvidó Miguelito? <laughs> Excuse me, I forgot uh, Miguelito. 14. How long have you lived here? We don't live here. We live in Mexico. You see, we have come here to visit my brother. You wish to speak to him? He's taking his siesta. I call him. There is no other question you want to ask, senor? Because we want to help you. Well, good work, boys. Kept at it, you'd make fine sense of stickers. <laughs> no, no thanks. After this work, uh, droving's a real pleasure. We get the money now? Yeah, as soon as the census is complete. Well, it is, eh? We went everywhere you told us to. Well, there's one ranch left. It's a big one. All of us will have to go. The Hastings Ranch. Hastings? There, you know it. Yeah. Well, that's where the herd's laying over. But why we all have to go? Oh, uh, well, a ranch that size, you've got to take an industrial survey, too. Of cattle, property, it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated. Yeah, and they got a foreman out there who don't take kindly to strangers. Yeah, like Gidwell, for instance. Oh, so that's it. He wants us to pack guns for him. Oh, now, wait a minute. Would I ask you to risk your lives on a job like this? Yeah, you sure would. <laughs> Only we're not gonna. Well, how can you quit on me now? Well, it's the easiest thing in the world, Clay. You just pay up. Well, I, I don't have the money right now. What do you mean you don't have the money right now? I mean, I don't carry a whole payroll with me. I knew it! I knew we'd been suckered! Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All I have to do is to wire El Paso and they'll send a bank order in a couple of hours. Look, Clay, if this is a trick... Honestly? All right. Two hours. After that, we're gonna take it out of your hide. Listen, uh, as long as you have nothing else to do... Well, I have. Like figuring out what I'm gonna do to you if you don't come up with that money. Two hours. You better start looking for the telegraph office, you know. Mr. Forrester? The sheriff told me I'd find you here. You're the marshal in charge of taking the census in this territory? Yes, ma'am, I am. 
Well, I'm Martha Hastings. I came to offer my apologies. I understand that one of your men was rather badly treated yesterday. I hope there won't be any trouble. Well, taking the census is required by law, ma'am. If uh, one doesn't cooperate... Uh... Ah, but I want to. That's why I'm here. I'd be more than glad to give you any information you need. Well, that's very gracious of you, ma'am, but uh, we can't do it here. I'll have to come out to your ranch myself. Really? I don't see why. Well, it's a matter of verification, ma'am. Oh, not that I wouldn't take your word, Mrs. Hastings, but, uh, well, uh, orders are orders. Of course. Why don't you come with me right now? I'll show you around myself. Oh, uh, that wouldn't be necessary. Ah, but I insist. It's the only way I can possibly make up for that shabby way your man was treated. All right. You give me one moment to, uh, get my horse. Yes. Ain't that Mrs. Hastings? Yeah. What's Clay doing? He going with her? If he's trying to beat us out of our money. Look, you two better go on back to the herd. I'll stay here and keep an eye on him. On him or on her? I'm just trying to make sure we get our money. Oh, yeah. All right, Mrs. Hastings. Lead the way. Hey, Clay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, Rowdy. Well, what do you want? I was just wondering if... It... Oh. Hello, Mrs. Hastings. I didn't hardly recognize you sitting there. How are you, Mr. Yates? Oh, good, good. So you're going to be around town for a while? If you are, I'd sure be pleased. And Rowdy, uh, Mrs. Hastings and I have some business. Uh, we're in a hurry. Oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I was thinking, Clay, it isn't fair of me to leave you in the lurch like this. I, I'll stay with you till the job's finished. Aren't you working for Mr. Favor anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah, I just took the day off to help out my old friend Clay here. Right, Clay? That's right. Because after the war, things weren't going very well. We didn't have enough money to pay the taxes. The collector came out with a foreclosure notice. My husband got into an argument with him. It was a fight. He was shot. What a shame. I wonder you were able to keep hold of the property. I thought I had to, for his sake. I managed to find a way to raise the money. I've done pretty well. It must have been difficult sometimes, though. It still is occasionally. But this is his land, and I won't give it up. Besides, it'd be like selling the happiest years of my life. Well, there must have been very few, since there are so many... Good years ahead of you. Mr. Forrester, I begin to understand why you were made a census taker. You could charm information out of a stone. Unfortunately, well, I'm not questioning one right now. Don't you think we should get on with your work? Well, I'm just about finished. Uh, all I have to do is verify the boundaries of your property. No sooner said than done. The western line runs north over those hills, and down that ridge to the south and east. I see. Hey, I hate to interrupt, uh, Clay. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. No, that's all right, Roddy. What is it? Well, they don't look too friendly out there. Don't worry. That's just my foreman and some of the hands. I'd be less worried if it was the James boys. You all right, Mrs. Hastings? This is Marshal Forrester. He's taking the census. I've been showing him around. But uh, I won't take any more of your time, ma'am. Thank you for your trouble and uh, your courtesy. Well, oh, you're very welcome. Please feel free to visit the ranch anytime. I'll make a point of it. Good day, Miss Hastings. Gentlemen. You never gave us the high sign. Wasn't any need to. Forrest is quite satisfied. He won't bother us again. I still don't like the idea of bringing him out here. He's a federal marshal, Jess. You don't keep people like that off the property without causing trouble. 
You don't invite them to snoop around, either. Oh, yes, you do. If you want to make sure that they only see what you want them to. Yes! think, Rowdy? I think I had myself a long ride for nothing. Well, you asked to come along. Yeah, I suppose I did. Now, uh, seriously, how does this place stack up to you? Just another ranch. Only a couple of hundred head of cattle? How does she make it pay? I don't know, unless she keeps the rest of her bees down the flats. Flats? Yeah, that's a couple of miles past where we stopped just now. But, uh, she said that her boundaries ended there. Yeah, she did, but uh, not Kane. He was uh, he stopped me and Pete there yesterday. Oh. Come to think of it, there wasn't any beeves there then either. And that's where it is. Where what is? Look, stop stalling, Clay. When do we get our money? <laughs> You really ain't such a bad fella. It's just that you gotta quit this running around in circles uh, type stuff and, and, and the census taking and get yourself a good, decent job. I'll do that someday. Here, have another drink. Oh, no, I'll get drunk. I'll oh, just a couple of drinks. Oh, come on. Uh, well, You're probably just tired. Yes, Why don't you uh, stretch out a bit? Hey, that's a real good idea. Now, look, what I'm telling you is that See, Mr. Favor, he offered you this job, and all you gotta do is take it. Yeah, I'm sure the offer is still open. That's good to know. Yeah, he could do a lot worse than working for the Gil Favor outfit. Good boss, good crew. Excellent ramrod. Good. Oh, God. Where are you going? Oh, I'm um, down to the telegraph office. See if that money order's in yet. Now, you just stay put. You don't move till I come back, you hear? Mm, uh, never happened. Senor boss, Senor Forrest just wrote in. It better be with the money he owes us. Evening, Clay. You uh, come to do the tally tonight? <clears throat> no, as a matter of fact, I think we can forget about it. This is between friends. I'll take your word for it. What you mean is uh, you don't need Rowdy and Wishbone and Pete anymore, huh? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. They're... Uh, they finished up this afternoon. Then where's our money? Well, I gave it to Rowdy. Ask him. Well, he's not here yet. Oh, well, he left town a couple of hours ago. Then he should have been back by now. Well, he said he was headed right back, unless, uh... Unless what? Well, he was pretty riled up about that foreman out at the Hastings Ranch. Uh, said he was fed up with the way Kane was pushing him around. Um, he might have... Uh, no, he wouldn't be that loco. He might have what? Well, he talked mighty big about settling with Kane once and for all. Tried to cool him off, but you know that temper of his. And you think he went to the Hastings Ranch? Well, he said he wasn't here. Where else would he go? I don't know, but I think you're pulling another one of your fast ones. What? But when you really stop to think about it, it don't make much sense that you'd go to all the trouble of blackmailing me just to have them help you count the census. Well, I thought I might need protection. Since when does a census taker need protection? Or is this just another one of your little angles? Well, I... I... Look! We've put up with you in your little games because we like you. But if anything has happened to Rowdy... All right, all right, take it easy. I'll give it to you straight. This is a little personal angle. Outlaws. Yeah, on the Hastings Ranch. In a hideout near the flats, and I think I have a pretty good idea where they are now. You told Mrs. Hastings about this? Told her. 
She's the one who set it up for them and for anybody else who'll pay her price. What kind of a fairy tale is that? I'm giving it to you straight. A friend of mine told me about it a couple of months ago. Former tenant, you might say. He tipped me off in case I might need to hole up. So you fooled us into doing your dirty work. I couldn't do it alone, Wishbone. I would have given you your cut. Well, Rowdy isn't getting any healthier. You figure he's out at the Hastings Ranch. He was mad enough to. All right. Wishbone, get Quince and Scarlet, some of the other men. All right, but when we get back, you better find some place to hide, like maybe China. If anything happens to Rowdy, even that won't be far enough, boy. So far, so good. Kane's patrol must have missed us in the dark. Never looked for us this far in. Yeah, but we're running out of flats. Huh. They must be guarding the hideout. Probably right behind them, down the road. It'll be a tough place to take them, though. They could spot us before we get near enough. Uh, you let them spot me first. I'll keep them busy. All right. Pete, Wishbone, Scarlet, Quince, come with me. The rest of you stay here. Right there. Well, you might as well shoot a man as a scare him after death. What are you doing here? Just looking around. This is all private rain. I know, but I'm the census taker. Didn't Mrs. Hastings tell you about me? She sure did. There's a house back there, all right. That's where they've got Rowdy. Pete, Clay and I are going in. You stay here with the rest. Why don't we all go in? Still too much chance of being spotted. We gotta find Rowdy before the shooting starts. But there aren't any guards left. I think we ought to rush him. You've been doing too much thinking for one night. Let's go. It's a clear shot from here to that door. We could be inside before they knew what hit him. Nothing doing. We find Rowdy first. But, uh, uh, maybe Rowdy isn't even here. You said he would be. Well, uh, maybe I made a mistake. Maybe, uh, maybe he's back at the ranch house. Maybe this is all just another trick. We're wasting time, Favor. Let's get in there and nail them. That's all you're concerned about, ain't it? Just to pick them up and then collect that reward and let Rowdy go hang. No, Rowdy's nowhere around. I... What? I couldn't stick his neck out like this. I left him at the hotel. But I needed your help to back my play here. Oh, so help me, Clay. Oh, come on, Favor. There's $15,000 in there. I don't want any part of it. And when we're out of here, believe me, I'm going to break I'm your I'm sorry, back. but we're heading in different directions. Wait. Sit quiet. Keep your hands flat on the table. That's right. Oh, a real good look at you. I've never seen $15,000 on a hook before. Well, what's Mr. Yates worth? At least as much, I should think. Put the gun down. Believe me, the idea of shooting a woman doesn't bother me a bit. Perhaps not, but I think the idea of losing his friend would bother Mr. Favor a good deal. We seem to be at a stalemate. Not as far as I'm concerned. Favor and his men are outside, you don't stand a chance. Neither does Mr. Yates. How'd you get him? My foreman thought it would be a good idea to question him and find out what you were really doing. It seems that you've given us your answer personally. All I have to do is walk outside and a dozen guns will rip this place apart. You got an answer for that, Mrs. Hastings? Maybe you'll walk outside, but Mr. Yates will be carried out. You're bluffing. So are you. It's a big pot, Mr. Forrester. 
$15,000 against a man's life. Now who's going to win? What's going on? Roddy ain't here. Clay pulled another one of his angles. He's just trying to get us to help him round up those outlaws. I knew it. I knew I spelled a rat. Did he go in there alone? Hmm. We're wasting time, Mr. Forrester. All right, I'll make a deal with you. Good. Two of them for Rowdy. All of them. All of them? With an hour's head start. Just let them through. Whatever you say. Pete, get back and tell the man. Okay. Don't you think he's pulling now? All right, it's clear. Get out of here and get as far away as you can. Well, since we have to wait anyway, shall we sit down and be comfortable? Get Rowdy out here. All right, Jess, bring him out. You sure took your time getting that money. I'm sorry, Roddy. Yeah, it's all right. Fifteen thousand's a big day's wages. They're on their way. One hour, remember. All right, Jess, you can put the gun away now. Sorry, you're not going to collect that bounty money, but really being a census taker is a much more respectable profession. So is being a lady rancher. After living here, you're going to find it a little cramped in prison. Ah, oh, but the evidence is gone. So it's only your word against mine, and I'm highly respected in the community. Play. No trouble, Mr. Forrester. I warn you. Play. Oh, hello. There. Juice said... A little angle I didn't figure on, Wishbone. So help me, Clay. Lay off of him, boss. He's just been kind of wiped out. <laughs> They've been bushwhacked. You lied. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hastings. I prefer you try the accommodations at the prison. Watch it. They may be coming back. In your favor. Be wishbone. You are here. It's Jesus. Jesus, what are you doing here? I bring the sheriff. The sheriff? Everybody all right? Yeah, sure. But, but what about those men? Did you get them? Cold. Two dead, the other surrendered. Your drover here told me that you'd gone after the outlaws. So I just got a posse and they run right into us. But how did you know they were in the flats? Senor Wishbone and Senor Pete tell me, just before you leave the camp. I figured we needed a real sheriff more than any nose-counting federal marshal. Yeah, there's almost $15,000 reward on those three fellas. That's more money than I made in my whole life. And you know something? I'm going to share it with you, young fella, for helping me get them. <laughs> oh, but, uh, Senor Wishbone and Senor Pete, they have two. Ah, then they deserve a share. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 